and welcome back to Skeptic, everyone. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing the major pre-wipe event, perhaps, most likely, most definitely, Down the Rabbit Hole series has been going on in Tarkov, followed by some arena news. It looks pretty exciting, with some possible future dates coming up real soon. And then we'll be talking, maybe, lightly, briefly, uh, around the topic of breaking ETS NDAs. Those who have, not to our beloved Gigabeef, though, he's a loyal <laughs> ETS tester. Uh, and I think that's pretty much the news. So, yeah, Giga, how's it going not breaking your ETS? Uh, uh, no comment. <laughs> Good job. Uh, no comment. You no passed. comment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the conversation continues, I guess, on allowing a little more access, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. I've, I've had this week has been filled with other delightful event stuff, which I guess, yeah, we, we could talk about some of that in, in a little bit. But um, this week has been dominated by the new quest line down the rabbit hole, which started with a video from BSG with Catface Man. It's kind of like the anonymous face, I guess, but cat face man. I don't really know why. Some glitchy thing taking over. It was like the, it was like the dude from you know when they did that random stream that was literally like twenty four hours yeah, long. It I was like that. the hide. It was like that hideout with that guy. <clears throat> I yeah. can't remember what his name is because he was like one of the dudes in the raid series, and I think he was one of the guys that got killed, if I remember correctly. But anyway, he's like the guy in the hideout, and they take over his computer and they talk a bunch of stuff about terror group killing people or whatever. So they're clearly like anti-terror group. Fair enough. But uh, then you get a quest from Prapor um, with a curious letter. And the idea is that you have to go and kill a bunch of scavs on woods and you have to go and find the encrypted drive. So the encrypted drive is like up in the scav bunker area where the goons spawn. And it's either down in the bunker itself or in one of the shacks nearby. This is like the the, where would you call it? Like the, the location that's right next to the Scav Bridge exit on Woods. It's the like northwesterly most corner of the map. Um, near, the, near the part with the mines. So you have to go up there. Um, that quest was honestly such a pain. People killing Scavs is one thing, but that bunker seemed to be just extremely toxic. It was like collecting a lot of people who were just like trolling the event and i think because it was the first mission like, i didn't i started mine late right like i think this started it was either friday or saturday or something and i like missed it the whole weekend then i ended up missing monday because i had to take um my kid to the doctor and then i started on tuesday so i was like really late even then even then there were still people who were trying to get the thing some people who were just like camping the area like it was almost impossible to get in it was really really annoying and i ended up I think it took me four attempts to actually get out. Like the third attempt, I managed to go get the drive. And then I died to somebody in like just on the rocks, like in between two of the lakes on my way mm. out, which is a pain. Then I had to go back and went in and it was not in the bunker. It was in one of the buildings above. And I had the perfect spawn as well. <clears throat> so I just like ran up, grabbed it and literally just like sprinted out of there as fast as I could. So that one was technically not very difficult, but ended up being hard because everyone was there for whatever reason. Then you ended up going on down the rabbit hole too. Right now there are six parts um, and they're not time gated or anything except for one piece that was sort of time gated but not anymore. And that one you had to go and locate the area where the documents are stashed which was kind of where I got camped by the person. There was still like loads of people like milling about. You had to go and find there was, I did see a meme somewhere on Twitter which was about, you know, Papo, here's his quest. It's, a tree, it's next to a tree on woods. You know. <laughs> Uh, which is just like insane because that's basically what it was. It was just like a tree on woods, like mm. great, like off the path slightly. And there, yeah, there was like a bunch of people around. I fought one guy, but we both ran away. I like ran in and touched the tree and then ran off. And then I killed a poor level one who was like trying to climb up a mountain with his commando gear in his like <laughs> stock M4. I felt so sorry for him actually. Um, so I managed to do that one. It wasn't actually too bad because it was a little bit of a in the middle of nowhere kind of uh, kind of location you couldn't sort of hide so much then <clears throat> here's where the quest started to get really interesting so at this point everybody knew that stuff was going on and things were afoot and something was coming because what they did was they removed all of the bosses from all of the maps the bosses were at zero percent for a while mm. 
Now, this is going to be relevant in a second. So what you had to do for part three, part three was like a combination of delivery from the past and the quest bullshit combined together, which is really quite toxic um, and also expensive. <laughs> because what you had to do, so you had to get two Wi-Fi cameras from Mechanic. You had to bring them into streets. You had to go to Caban's office. You had to plant one of them outside the office. You had to unlock the door with Caban's special key, the one-use key. You had to go into the office, plant the other camera, grab a set of documents, leave the streets raid, go back to customs, go into dorms, plant the documents in the room opposite dorms marked room, and then fire a yellow flare from the dorms courtyard, and then survive without... Yeah, and, then, and survive through that entire thing. You can't, you can't die at any point during that mission. And to sweeten it off, you can't kill any scavs. At all, through the whole thing. None on streets, none on customs. Going to Lexos and going, to, um, and going into to dorms. It's bullshit, so, part two. So it's, exactly, so <laughs> it's, it's bullshit combined with delivery from the past. It was like the hardcore version of. Not to mention, when this quest first dropped, well, guess what? Sold out really quickly. The Caban keys, because you needed the key to get into the office to go and plant the stuff. Guess who wasn't spawning? Caban. <laughs> so there was nowhere to get the keys from except random pockets. And I don't, I don't even know. Like, I think they were spawning incredibly rarely at the beginning in jackets, like at the old spawn rate, which is like negligible, right? Like they just right. don't spawn. So keys at one point were up to, I think, six million. And you only got one try, right? So it was like, you go in. It's like one of the first things you have to do. It's not. I was trying to like strategize it before when I was reading through, being like, "Oh, can I like, can I like go get like plant one Wi-Fi camera, grab the docks, leave, go to customs, do the dorms bit, then go back to streets, go in, unlock the thing, plant the last Wi-Fi camera, and then leave? Like, can I just leave that bit to the end so I can do everything else? Not, not the case because the documents were in the room. So <clears throat> if you went, if you went and planted one, went in the room, grabbed the docks. Killed a scav, failed. Have to start again. The key's one use, you have to buy it again. You go in there, you die, you have to start again. You go to customs, you kill a scav by accident, or you, you get killed by PMC on customs. You die, you have to start again. You know, it's just, it was absolutely, absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. And it was so crazy. So I got to that quest on either, I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, so we just, I just got to that quest on Tuesday. And at the end of my stream, I had enough time to go in, plant the two cameras, grab the docks, and then leave. And I didn't have time to do customs because I wanted, I didn't want to like rush dorms. Like, there's no way I wanted to just do that because, it, you know, it's expensive and you want to take it carefully. The following day, on Wednesday, <clears throat> well, I guess we'll go through the, the next couple of quests first, the ones that are ahead of where I am currently in my story. So Down the Rabbit Hole Part 4 was a global event to hand in bear buddy plush toys. So you could buy them off the flea and hand them in. It didn't need to be finding raid. You could just hand it in. Once that was completed, you could just hand one in and that completed the the quest for you, and that moved you on to part five. Part five got, um, oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So, so part five is relatively straightforward. I'll just skip over this one, and then we can move on to the important one, the fifth, the sorry, the sixth part. Part five is the one that I'm still on at the minute, which is you have to go to shoreline, you have to grab four flash drives from the same location, which is basically somewhere around weather station, and then you have to stash one of the flash drives by each car extract. Basically, you put all the others in your quest stash in your um, back in the inventory. And you just take one in with you, one to customs, one to lighthouse, one to interchange, one to streets. And you have to plant them by the car extracts on each of those maps. And then after doing that, you have to kill seven players on each of those maps. So I'm still in the middle of doing that because, you know, 50 kills last week took like two and a half days for me on factory. To getting 28 kills across like maps that are not factory is going to, you know, it takes a bit longer. So I haven't been able to complete it yet. But once you do that, and you then get down the rabbit hole part six. Now, down the rabbit hole part six, because people were ahead of me and I was quite behind, that quest released on the Wednesday in between my Tuesday stream and my Thursday stream. Down the rabbit hole part six is the one that probably everybody saw because it was, you know, it's quite like, oh my God, as a quest. Kill all the bosses in a single raid, which oh, presumably, yeah. and, and survive an extract, which presumably, you know, originally when it came out, we we're like, well, they must be spawning all in one place. And guess where they decided to put them in their eternal wisdom? Lexos. So here's me, old muggins, with my <laughs> Intel docs from the Lexos building. <laughs> and I've basically got like one customs raid to do it. 
If I die, I'd have to have gone back to Lexos to plant the Wi-Fi cameras to grab the docs from Caban's office with the single-use key while all the bosses are there. So on the release of part six, it basically made part three impossible because they decided to put part six, which is like a heavy PvP quest, over the top of part three, which is a stealth quest, really, is what, is what that quest is. And uh, now that they're t- like meshed together, like it, it is like technically doable, right? You could go in with a team or you can go in really late and sometimes maybe you can go in and clean it up. Like, at least the Caban key is like a bit cheaper because people were farming them every raid because it was 100% spawn in Lexos, so at least there's more Caban key. So maybe it wasn't necessarily as bad as that, but even still, it's nigh on impossible to complete now. Um, because like some of the raids, people don't kill all the bosses, they die, right? So you get in there and like Sanitar with Charleston in there, and you're not allowed to kill scavs for part three. And there's like, you know, there's dudes on the mounted guns. Like it's just, it's completely insane, right? And there's like player scavs in there because they're farming the gear both from the bosses. Like anybody with six karma can just go and sit in there. Um, I did it once at the end of the stream just to have a mess around. You can like go and fight the PMCs as a six karma scav, knowing that you've got like, I was fighting with Caban against the PMC in this, in the one with my Saiga 9, with the one raid that I did. And I got shot from, there was a PMC actually at both ends. And I got shot in the back by the other PMC, which was a bit sad. But yeah, you can go in there and make life really hard for people. So like, yeah, if you haven't done part three, it's like borderline impossible now, in my opinion, to complete it, which is a bit of a shame. After that, there hasn't been anything. So yeah, I'm still trying to get the kills. I've planted all the drives. I'm just trying to get the kills for part five. And uh, part six, like, I mean, uh, it depends on how long the quest line is open for, to be honest with you, like whether I'm even going to bother because yeah, I'm not going to be here like next week. And I mean, Monday, Tuesday, I will be. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I don't know, man. Like I'm, I'm not tied to, to getting it. Like there's no crazy reward for it you get 10 of these weird new stims sj15 mm. which has been mentioned in some of the like law stuff and it's like endurance 20 strength 20 attention 20 perception 20 weight limit plus 30 percent maximum stamina health regen five per second stamina recovery rate two per second stops bleeds antidote removes toxin but has a 50 percent chance that you just instantly die when you take it Mm. So, yeah, you get ten of those for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Like, there's no other parts now, and I haven't been for a bit. So I don't know whether this was just a random event. I think lots of people would kind of expect it because of like the movie intro and you know part one, etc. We're expecting it to be a bit like last time with the terror group trail, where there's going to be twenty parts, and you know you're going to get two lines of stash and all this stuff. I think that's looking unlikely at this point especially with some of the things we're going to talk about where you know i mean everyone knows that like arena's like relatively close to launch so it seems that there's not really that much time left i, I, I don't know we'll see but either which way it's been you know it's kind of interesting so far like working our way through the quests the one part that really puts me off even trying part six is <clears throat> killing all the bosses in one raid is infinitely more difficult than like kill all the bosses on the streets just in general and i was watching landmark do this and like this exact thing happened to him on the very first raid that i watched him do it because i was just like casually watching him uh, while i was like doing some other stuff and so he runs in goes in kills killer kills sanitar like you know take your time got to repair heal heal yourself up like maybe pack your mags like, you can't just like run around when there's like because how many are there Kaban, Tegila, Sanitar, Sturman, Killer, Gluhar, and Rishala. like seven bosses right like absolutely mm-hmm. insane and you've got Sturman like on the roof as a sniper scab like it's completely unfair and so he goes around and he like methodically and slowly carefully like kills them all like really tactical actually like did a really good job gets right to the end can't find Sturman someone's already killed him on the roof because he's like slightly more exposed yeah. than the others that's it You've got to go and start again. Run out yeah. of the raid, leave and start again. So, and like, you know, I don't want to take anything away from those guys, but like it was slightly easier if you did it like immediately as the quest dropped because like A, people couldn't jump on straight away. Like people hadn't got there yet, you know, stuff like that. Um, and all the player scouts hadn't realized that, you know, the get six rep people could just go and hang out there as well. So like before everybody realized it was probably the best time to do it. And there was um, a couple of guys like, I think it's, it's, it's still extremely skilled to go and do it, like no matter what, right? But um you know, there's a bunch of guys who did it first try. I think like Axel did it first try. Um, I think Tiggs might have done it first try. There's like a couple, there's quite a few people who did it in one go. But if you're like a little slower, if you're not like Shift W, like super experienced at killing the bosses, 
you're just never going to do it because there's going to be yeah. somebody on the other side that kills you. you know, they kill Resh one side. You kill, I don't know, Caban on this side. Well, that's it. You're both screwed. Neither of you could complete it now. <laughs> so if you see any of the other bosses dead, you just have to leave the raid and go back in if you like really want to do it. So it's like super, super RNG in like the most annoying way. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of like, I just don't know if I even can be bothered. That's kind of what put me off like a lot from doing it. Because you can't like try it and chip away at it and like get it done. It's just it's all or nothing. You have to do it really fast. You have to beat everybody else to it. You know, it's not just you. Like it, it, most people would be hard pressed to kill all those guys in an offline raid. And after enough practice, you could probably do it, right? But yeah. most people are going to find that challenging enough as it is. Um, there were some people who were cheesing it, which I mean is also a completely valid strategy. They had some of those like DSF flares, I think they're called. They were the ones from the Halloween event where if you shot the green flare in the air, all the bosses and all the scouts became your friend. And people would like, a couple of people had some, like they're really rare, but some people did have them and like had them stored up. You could go into Lexos, into the main area. You could fire it into the sky, collect all the bosses together in a little thing because they all came up to say hi to you and then like grenade launch them all and just complete the quest in like one go. And that was like one thing that I have heard. I haven't actually seen it myself, but I've heard some people saying that that was doable at least so i mean fair play right that's like the you know the meta way if you've got the resources to do that like i don't have a dsf player i haven't had any the whole wipe i never saw any so i don't even have that option but uh yeah other than that like it's man it's hard and like if you haven't completed part three yet you've got your work cut out like it's a real toughie a real toughie so yeah i, I wish that two things i wish that a you didn't have to kill them all in one raid that there was some leeway i, I don't know so that you you didn't didn't have to get them like you know you didn't just get Duck if somebody else kills one of the other bosses too. And I also wish that they'd like put the bosses not in the place where part three was in because they've effectively like pulled the ladder up on everybody who was a bit late on it. Like they could have put them in Pinewood Hotel. Like Killer already spawns mm-hmm. in Pinewood Hotel. Just put the dudes in Pinewood. Like there's literally no issue with that. That would have been completely fine. Would have been kind of interesting. People already fight over Lexos every single raid. They always go there to check Caban anyway. He's like the new killer, right? Because he always spawns in the same place. It's like running up the ramp to go into interchange. It's like the new version of that. People do fight around Pinewood, but not that much. It would have been interesting if they put them somewhere else. Put them in the theatre. You know, put, put them somewhere that people don't normally fight, is in, in my opinion on it. Both for interest's sake and also for um, just allowing people to participate, um, which you can't really do right now because it makes earlier quests extremely hard. So those would be my two takeaways from the event, I think. Um, yeah, whether we're going to complete it or not, I don't know. Whether it's going to matter, I don't know. Some people were like, oh, it'd be cool if you complete it, you get something in Arena. Like, you know, whatever. No, I'm not really that bothered. Um, there's like lots of speculation about whether there's going to be another part or whether you will get something for having finished it extra, something special. Uh, I don't know. Seems unlikely at this point, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that was a good summary. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I just saw, watched from the sidelines. Mm. Didn't really uh, look too much into it. I saw the I saw a couple of interesting things about like the Lexos key the. Um, Apparently there was like a jump you could do, but you needed a teammate to like sneak yeah. in to Alexis, which I thought was pretty clever. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that, yeah, there was a way that you could like jump up onto the side and then jump on somebody's head. And then you could like clip through the back corner of the office area and mm. get in without having the key. I don't know how you actually then get back out. Maybe the same way. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I saw just people getting inside, which, yeah, like. Fair enough. I like those kind of <laughs> things. It's, it's quite, quite fun. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I don't know. It's 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 okay. Right. I think the I guess the other part about it was I did enjoy the fifty PMCs thing a lot more because it was felt a lot more active. Like a lot of this, I felt like I was like creeping in to plant Wi-Fi cameras, to grab docks, to creep to customs, to creep into dorms, to plant the thing, to creep out, to fire a flare. I did actually have a crazy like experience there because we I planted the docks and then went out to do the flare, wandered into the courtyard, no one was there fire the flare up, literally turn around to run away and then get like lit up from two story. I think it might've been a scav or something because they, they weren't very accurate. Mm. But I was just like, <laughs> the whole of chat was like, ah, because you know, we were going to have to redo it if we got killed. And I was like, literally in the open in like the playground bit by <laughs> dorm three. I was, uh, that was terrifying. And then I ran from, well, maybe they, maybe they weren't a player scav, I don't know. But I ran like around the corner, past the car, but the car wasn't there. And I went to go back towards like, you know, the fisherman's boat kind of smoke extract thing that way and as i was running that way it was just like just grenades going off behind me i was just like oh my god i was like 
dude, like I'm I'm gone. I'm long gone. There's no chance that I'm even fighting you. It's like I'm half the map away and you're just still nading, you know, like no, there's just no <laughs> way. Um but yeah, there's just like a lot of creeping around and then <clears throat> taking the go to get the drives, uh, go to each of the car things without getting seen. So you can plant the thing. Cause it was like a 40 second plant as well. It's like really long. So I just felt like until I just got onto the player killing bit, which I did now, I've already got one kill for it. Um, or actually, no, I didn't know. Cause that one kill was on shoreline, which is a map that you don't need it, need it on. So I don't have any kills for it yet. So I've only just got onto the PMC like farming piece up until now. It's just been like sneak around and I just, it's fine. But I enjoyed it a little bit less. I think after the, the sheer bloodlust of the 50 PMCs in Factory, I kind of, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm ready. That felt like an arena event. This this feels like more of a, you know, proper Tarkov event again. So I'm like, kind of feels a bit out of step with the current vibe of just like, arena is like imminent. And mm-hmm. we've all just like murdered 50 of our fellow brethren. And now it's like, you know, we're going to creep around for four hours. <laughs> it's a bit of a change of pace, but maybe a good thing, honestly. Too much bloodlust, not necessarily good for the brain. Lest we turn it into cod, heaven forbid. <laughs> heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like what else to say about it? Just I'm basically used the I'm basically just using the Meta M4 every single raid. I don't know what happened. Like last wipe, I converted to the RD. Yeah, I think I wasn't using a Meta enough M4 last wipe. Mm. Whereas this wipe, I like don't care. I have tons of money. It doesn't seem to be going down. So, yeah, we're 28 recoil and 60 ergo with a 40 rounder. I'm not using the 60s. I don't, I'm using the 40 rounders with the Osprey Class 5. So I've got this, like, fun loadout now, which is, like, Osprey Class 5 with the 40 rounders with a Meta M4. And it's like, ooh, ooh, it's good. Arms protection. You know, ooh, it's actually all right. It's, it's okay. You know, stomach doesn't turbo murder you anymore because it's only 105 times. So it, feels, it feels good. It feels good. I've got way more kills with the M4 than anything else recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing else feels anywhere near as good. Um, yeah, it's just it's slaying. It's slaying. I'm loving it. Nice. Yep. So that's the main event. <clears throat> What's been going on in actual Tarkov, the world of Tarkov? Um, what should we do? What should we talk about next? Should we talk about, well, what's, what's the most natural flow? Yes or Arena? I don't really know. Um, talk arena. I guess arena. Yeah. yeah, I guess. We'll talk arena. So the main thing for arena, and I guess it is news. And um, sometimes on these, I actually feel like slightly uncomfortable with even you know, especially if it's like furious information sources or whatever. It's just like it's an uncomfortable place to be. But I know on this in particular, Nolan has reported on it in his YouTube video, so we can reference him as a source, and it's fine. It was even in his thumbnail. But um, there was some, there was some like. Plain text left over, I believe. So, okay, let, let's go right back right to the beginning. So, Battlestate Games have updated the launcher. I was actually incorrect the other day. I was talking on my stream about it, and I was like, oh, I think only some people have got the new launcher. And I think that was true very early on. But, but quite quickly, I think the new launcher got rolled out to everyone. <clears throat> and so now, when you log in, there is EFT and EFT Arena on top and bottom next to each other in the games list which is quite cool i remember seeing on tarkov tv that nikita was quite excited about having two games in the battle state launcher because it does it's one of those like archaic games things isn't it it's just like the you know the the xyz you know developer launcher and it's like the one game they make it's like did you guys really need to you know anyway but now he's got like two games in there it's like kind of almost justifies the launcher so everyone's got this new launcher it's um now it's sort of like arena themed the the logo, I think a lot of people thought the logo was like an arena logo, but it's actually the, the A in Battlestate Games because like the A is like a star in it or something. But anyway, so it's now like a grey themed launcher. Um, and in that, they either purposefully or accidentally left some like plain text behind somewhere in it. I think you had to like, I think you had to like delve slightly into the launcher program a little bit. Like you couldn't just see it from its, the front end, like a, a regular user wouldn't be able to see it. But it's said in there somewhere. Uh, oh god what, what's even the wording i think nolan's got it on his anyway it, it doesn't really matter but it said words to the effect of you know congratulations you've been selected for the first wave of the arena test or whatever which is going to be launching on the 14th of december something to that effect and so that kind of like teased or 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 did it tease the <laughs> arena date because as per nice guys video which i did watch and it is fair enough 
he was like, BSG, no, I was talking to somebody else about this as well. BSG know that people look into their stuff. Mm-hmm. So they have to have their, they know they have to have their ship quite tight before they launch anything because people sure. will check and it will get seen. But you can also quite well believe that BSG just didn't think about it, overlooked it and just shipped it, right? But the thing is, because they like to mess around and give us teasers on dates and stuff, now we have no idea whether it's right or not. Because it could just be an oversight, but it also may be in there purposefully as a leak to get people excited. Who knows? Who honestly knows? <laughs> so whether the 14th is to believe, be believed or not for the first wave, I don't really know. Who's going to be in the first wave? I don't really know. So we'll, we'll just have to see about that. But I mean, that's exciting. I mean, if there's like wording to that effect, like we know it's coming this month. We know it's going to be before the wipe. Like it's got to be soon, right? It's, it's got to be pretty soon. <clears throat> so I think like, you know, 14th is probably as good as any a date. If you're, it, it seems reasonable. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. It, seems, it seems reasonable that it, it could be. Yeah, I've seen some other conspiracy theories around the dates, but it looks like a double digit to me. Oh, yes, that's right, actually. You reminded me because Dimitri posted on Twitter, didn't he? And it said there was a a screenshot. I don't know if you could pull it up, but it was a it was like a it was the banner for the release date of Arena. And they'd scrubbed out the first part of the word so that all you could there we go all you could see was the word day at the end extremely helpful when you're talking about days of the week and december something where the number was was blocked out and they use a particular font um (laughs) which is called bender and that's the font that uh, tarkov actually uses in the game so if you want to like replicate stuff you can actually download the font bender and use it so people were like superimposing the font over the poster and trying to work out like what would fit and mm-hmm. what wouldn't fit and some things like some of the double digits didn't fit like the 16th and stuff i think didn't fit but some other ones did i think all the single digits did and some people were like oh well like this you know some of some of these ones like these ones aren't like they're not symmetrical so if they centered if they like center justified it whatever then like it's not symmetrical so it can't be this it must be that um so there was that. And then I know that there's, uh, there was like a whole of, I don't know, we're probably not really going to talk about it that much, I don't think, but like there was a load of ARRS stuff going alongside the, um, just jumping back to the, the rabbit hole trail thing to actually unlock some of the parts for it. I tend not to follow the ARRS stuff these days because it's, it's too complicated. There's too much to it. There's a ton yeah. of people already looking at it and it generally tends not to actually have much bearing on what goes on in the game. <clears throat> But they were looking through that, and apparently the references for 12.7 kept popping up, like, all over the place, according to Nolan. So, like, I know he released a video saying, like, you know, maybe Arena's on the 7th. I mean, clearly today's the 8th, and it hasn't been released. So, you know, that, what, that wasn't correct. That was just, like, BSG trolling or whatever. Um, so, yeah, there's, like, been a few different ones. And, yeah, so that, you reminded me, that was a good point. There was, like, a ton of people who were trying to guess which one it might be and what date and whatnot. But there's, like, I think the issue is there's quite a few that would fit. And there's all of the single digits fitted, and then there's some of the teens fitted too. Yeah, I saw some people's, like, you know, they try to, like, fill in the gaps and, like, their font, like, their added font was, like, too spaced out. I was like, no, that can't be right, you know? Like, the, the actual space in between the characters was too... Mm. Or I was like, nah, that's not trustworthy. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I think 17th or... What was the more common? It was like a... Yeah, it was probably Crand that had one that... His was, was quite reasonable, I think. Yeah, it was the 17th, I think, Sunday. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, and I thought Sunday the 17th also made sense as well. I mean, it's let's say that the 14th ends up actually being through for like the first wave mm-hmm. you could imagine that the final wave would be like for everybody for like the majority of people say i don't know how many it would be say it was like 10 to 20 percent of people right on the first one you imagine that like you know the final 50 percent wave that goes to everybody else would be on the sunday the 17th because coincidentally that's the day that the hanover like esports tourney ends 
Right, right. That would be like the perfect time to release Arena for everyone, right? It's like, we've done this big event, there's a big tournament, like people from other games are coming to watch. Like we still don't really know which teams from which um, games are playing yet, but, you know, they're trying to grab community from other places, presumably Counter-Strike, Valorant, Rainbow Six, like any, anywhere, anywhere that's got a, a pro scene that's an FPS that people might be like, you know, remotely interested. And they're trying to grab community from that. And so it makes sense to be like, yeah, we put on this big thing. Here's all your favorite like esports, you know, FPS stars from like all these other games. You will watch <laughs> yeah. all your dudes, and then like, oh, by the way, like the tournament's just finished. You feel like you want to play? Bam! Now you can. You know, seventeenth it launches to everybody. If you're like structuring it purely around marketing, which Battle right. often doesn't, um, because of you know various things or that the stuff isn't ready or whatever. Um, that sometimes they just don't for whatever reason. But if you were. The seventeenth for like the full open would make sense to me. Um, I think it's like it's very plausible. Yet complete speculation. <laughs> Can uh, I add yeah. that caveat in before we of, get of course. of something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I who 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 knows, right? Mm-hmm. Who knows? And given that it's like staged, we don't really know. I know Nikita said the stages were going to be quick to try and make sure the servers weren't overloaded and stuff, but like. I mean, how, how fast is fast? Is that a matter of hours? Or is that, you know, three or four days? You presume three or four days, right? You do like a day with a load of people, see how the servers are going, do another one the following day, another one the following day, another one the following day. So you have like 14th, 15th, and 16th, and then do the full wave out on, on the 17th. I mean, could be. Could be. I don't know. We'll see. Are you, are you like... I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be fun. I'm like, I don't know. I think, <sighs> I think you might be more like, uh, I think once people get in, because there's a lot of psycho people who are like not really very excited about it. But I think one people get in and have something to grind for and have a rank, I think that it might be more compelling than people expect. Do you know what I mean? Like once you're like, oh, you're like actually competing now. Like maybe you have, I don't know. Do you really have, do you have like a, like an MMR? It's not really like an MMR thing. I don't think. I, don't, I can't remember exactly how the system works, whether it's like, because you have those like in-game points. You have like money, but you have in-game points as well. I think, is it GLP? I, I forget. Um, but I don't know if there's like a rank as well, like your actual ranking. Because um, like climbing the leaderboard is quite addictive in a competitive sense mm-hmm. you know like like uh, to be honest i haven't uh, i've never really played an fps with a ladder or an mmr like that like it's actually not something that i've ever done like you know i used to play counter-strike source but that was all you know you just yeah. join servers or whatever right. i was never like never even remotely semi-pro or anything that like i sucked at cs um and like playing yeah, the original like Modern Warfare and stuff. Like again, that was there was like pro scene, but that was all like privately organized. It wasn't like online ladders for that or anything within the game itself. And then since then, I have played like battle royales and Dota. So like the, my my experience with like MMR systems has all come from like RTSs and MOBAs rather than from FPSs. So mm-hmm. I don't really I don't really know. I know like people grind like you know, Apex Legends and and Valorant and CS2 and stuff, but like I've never ground any of those for. Of rank i've only ever ground rts's so it's going to be interesting to see like how much of that they they bring over and as i said yeah i'm not really an expert so i'm not 100 percent sure how that will go i mean generally speaking yes systems that incentivize you to keep playing the game are good like effective do that you know <laughs> i guess um yeah like that it's like whether rank will be enough. That's the thing. Well, I mean, I think it. I think it will. There's a. There's a definitely a very prominent trend in you know these online games where it's like they're a person's value is intrinsically tied to their pixel number hmm. <laughs> to the rank. I myself being one of those in a previous life. The um, the the e team <laughs> as it is called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and um so i mean it's uh it, you know it's an effective system in general definitely mm-hmm. something that works i think i just you know there's there's a lot to choose from nowadays there's a lot of choices in gaming i just 
don't yeah. know if that's really I don't know. I kind of uh, I hate to like you know the saying if you don't get anything nice to say don't say it at all. I'm going to ignore not true for podcasts. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that advice. Not how this stuff works. I just sometimes like I, I wouldn't say cringe, but I just like wince a little bit whenever I see some of the arena stuff coming out. And I like just, you don't uh, think it's going to be like good for esports? You don't think it's going to be a good esport kind of thing or like what in what sense? Um yeah, I guess cuz I'm biased towards that like I don't I don't I just don't rank it that highly in my head. I don't know. When it comes to like FPS games, I really like the skill ceiling to be high. Hmm. And I think Tarkov has that, but I just fear that the way Tarkov is going or like is going in a general sense or like was, you know, probably always going to go. You know what I mean? Like armor his own, basically. Hmm. I just feel like it's introducing more of that, you know, quote unquote luck factor. Which kind of plays into that idea of okay, like high. Aren't you gonna be? Aren't you gonna be pricing your like sub pixel? You know, rib <laughs> rib box. No. You know, accuracy. No. It's the ultimate aim labs. Just no. Get good. Kill it, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it. There could be something. I just I can't really think. Like the closest thing I could think of is like battle royale, where you have like that sort of luck factor, like the RNG factor. You know, it's still like a high skill game. Like, I guess PUBG is like relatively, you know, a higher skill. I don't, I don't really know. I don't, didn't play a lot of PUBG. I don't know a lot of PUBG, but I know that the recoil was like moderately difficult to control. Yeah. But by, PUBG like, was pretty, PUBG is pretty good. And it's like a combination because it's like a more distilled version of Tarkov in some sense, right? Like, uh, PUBG is like, it's kind of like the, the competitive. Yeah, sort of almost the competitive like sibling to EFT because both of them are like the spiritual successes to DayZ. Like you need a reason to actually move because like on DayZ, you know, yeah, there's like food and stuff, but like the reason is survival. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to engage with like other people, so it's like it's just a very different vibe. Like PUBG's got the whole like you know, you're going to be compressed into in the circle until you're all dead. Is the right. vibe of, of PUBG, and then Tarkov's like, well, you don't have to fight other people, but there's a timer. And so it's like, they're just, you know, it's different vibes, whereas like, yeah, PUBG is ultimately, you know, it's ultimately is a PvP game and it has to be. And it, but it's got all of those elements of like moving through terrain, like staying, staying in cover, you know, being like tactical and positioning well and fighting other players. And like, it's, 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 it's very good in that way. Like I haven't played PUBG for a long time, but like I, it was, it was insane. We played it for so long. And I enjoyed it for years. I don't know how long we played PUBG for. I think it was like three years or something. I really, really enjoyed PUBG in the time that we played. And just because of all of that, like it was every game was different. Like the circles in different place every time. The maps were big, but like you could traverse them kind of on foot. And then, you know, you, you kind of wanted to see a vehicle. But there's like, yeah, there's vehicles as well. There was like PUBG had so much stuff, honestly. Like it was, it was so good. And it was, yeah, it was good for that competitive thing too. Cause the skill ceiling was like quite high, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the only caveat with that I would say is like, and I don't know for PUBG. Um, but like the battle royale where you you have to like you make a strategic choice where you land but like yeah. you don't have much say i don't know for pubg you could probably correct me but you don't have much say in what actually like spawns like what it gives you so That's i don't know how, like i don't know how much variance that actually matters in pubg it didn't matter as much because you would eventually find the stuff and you'd like go up through the, like it, it did matter but i don't think it was like necessarily game it wasn't like the, the be all and end all. The, for me, the worst part of PUBG actually mm -hmm. was like the variance around like the final circles. Like you could kind of deal with any circles early. Like there were always ways to like deal with it. But the final circles, some of them were just like you just couldn't. There were some that you just you just couldn't win. It was like you just you just rolled the dice bad on that day, and it's like from you know there's two people. Like, so you're in a circle, right? And there's two guys in a in a house on each side, super defended, but neither can attack each other. And the circle moves, and one of the houses is in it, and the other isn't. It's just like sucks to suck. You yeah. just lose that match, right? And it's like you're right at the end, and it's two teams of three. You just you just lose. The team that's out of the circle loses in that situation. And there's there's quite a few of those where there's like nothing you can really do, like especially around like there's certain pieces of terrain. It's like complicated terrain where. 
you know, it's like somebody it's like has like just there. an insane position. Yeah, if you weren't yeah, there right. already, you're now just dead. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it because like you just you have to run into the open. And if the person is like remotely competent, then you're you just could you're like it's like a 95 5 in terms of the you know who's gonna win in this situation. Like one guy is like able to just like lean peek out of a window while you're like running through the open. It's like just like <laughs> it's so imbalanced sometimes. And that's like kind of what frustrated me because that's like that's the sum result of like all the choices that you've made in the past 35 minutes. And then it's like the final five minutes and then you roll the dice and up, oh, you've just lost. And like, it's like, what? Like, yeah. it's so annoying, right? Sometimes it just didn't feel like fair enough at the end. And I don't know how you solve that, honestly. Um, again, I was never a pro at PUBG. I was never even semi-pro. I just played it casually with my mates. But, um, you know, we played it for a long time and we were, we were okay. We were all right. We held our own. Um, but yeah, that always felt like viciously unfair to me. <clears throat> and sometimes it was just annoying. Well, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know much about PUBG, so I'll only speak from what I do know, which was like Apex, like up to season two. Like one of the things, like just innately with battle royales on the competitive sense, like the fact that you don't, there's that RNG element of like you don't, uh, like you have no say, like you have strategy where you land, um. But sometimes you just get unlucky and you're just screwed. Like, I remember watching yeah. and also playing ranked, but like mainly watching. Like, I watched a couple like early pro events for um, Apex and like some teams would just get screwed off the landing. Like, yeah. they wouldn't get anything like useful, like consider like, you know, viable. So they would have to like hide and rat for like the next whatever. And the way the tournament was set up, it was like they had every incentive to, you know, it was like a multiple game, so they had like every incentive to get as high placement oh, as they the could. List. Yeah, okay. So like, it was just kind of from like a viewer perspective, it was really boring watching, mm. you know, your favorite team or whoever just sit there and rat for like 10, 15 minutes to yeah. get placement. And then as a player, I imagine it's, you know, not the greatest feeling in the world. But like since then, they've done a... They, done a lot to like change the game to make it more um to mitigate on that variance like one of the things they've done which i'm going to insert my little statement here that i originally thought of back in the day but never made it public but <laughs> they have like a you can get like currency and then there's like these shops like a secondary objective around these map these shops so you can like exchange a currency for like a guaranteed item so it kind of helps like mitigate some of the variants you get, uh, which I, I, I really, that's I like cool. that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good solution, I think. I think um, the thing about like Apex versus PUBG, which is quite interesting, which is one of the things I never really liked as much about Apex, is that the RNG around like items and stuff is actually probably much more important in Apex because the time to kill is so much higher. The difference yeah. between like someone who has armor and someone who doesn't have armor is like way more. Like, you, just, you just simply can't win an outright gunfight because you have to you know find player and like hold cursor over player and then right. hold button down until they're dead and it just takes that much longer that like in PUBG you know if you're in the wrong place it's a bit like Tarkov right if you're in the wrong place it doesn't matter if you've got like the class 2 armor there's only three classes in PUBG 1 2 and 3 you had like the class 2 armor like you if you didn't know where somebody was and you came around the corner like they could still just like beam you with a AK or whatever it is um, as you come around the corner. Like, yeah, it gave you an advantage, like you survived a few more hits or whatever, but um, it's a bit like in Tarkov, where in Class 4 or Class 5, it's sometimes you just, you know, just die out of nowhere or you get headshot or whatever, right? Um, so I think that like gear advantage is a lot smaller maybe in PUBG, which means that then like it matters less, the variance itself, whereas like, it was one of the things I never liked about Apex, just because I'm not a pro, and especially back then when Apex came out, right? Like I wasn't even playing... Um, was I was I were we playing like PUBG exclusively? I can't, can't really remember, but like yeah, a lot of PUBG's positioning and blah blah blah. Like I didn't, we weren't really playing any of the like CSs or like the actual like aim lab aim trainer type shooters. So my aim has never been like phenomenal. And when Apex came out, it was just like oh, this is a aim game basically. This is hard because the higher that you make the TTK, the more of an aim game it becomes because you have to hold the mouse over the man for the longer time. And if you get the drop on somebody, yeah, like if it takes, tra yeah, tracking heavy, yeah, yeah for it's sure, like track it, tracking movement, like that kind of stuff. You can get the drop on someone, but because it takes you, you know, a second or two seconds to kill them, they can like turn around, and if they're better, a better shot, 
then yeah. they can easily kill you yeah. with the amount of armor and stuff in that game with the shield the effect of the shield system um and it was the thing that i never really liked about it because i was like i can out tactic somebody and then still mm-hmm. die because they're better at aim um which used to frustrate me which is one of the reasons why i didn't like it and it's like i always found that kind of a weird thing because i was like I almost like bristled at my own opinion about it. Cause I was like, I don't really like the fact that I like don't like it because I'm bad at aiming. I don't, <laughs> it's not really something that I'm that proud of particularly, but um, I was like, yeah, you know, it's just, that's it. You know, there's other ways like in Tarkov and in PUBG and some of those other games, it's like, there's other ways to like be good. You don't have, you know, you can, you can think your way out and win against the guy with better aim. Better aim is an advantage, but like tactics is another advantage. And it's like, um, PUBG was better because you couldn't sit still in some sense. That's why, like, you didn't really have... I mean, you did in the circles, but, like, outside the circles, you had lots of fights, people, like, moving at the edges of the circles, and there wasn't much, like, ratting, so to speak, because you couldn't really rat unless you were, like, right in the middle of the circle. And then you could just, like, hold the position, but that's kind of fair enough, because, like, why move? Because that's the whole objective of the game. Um, And I guess, like, Apex is sort of similar, like, there's less cover. There's not really much point in ratting, because people don't die, like, instantaneously, so they get a chance to either run away and heal, or... Like fights take a lot longer in Apex. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. But I'm probably going quite off, ta- off, uh, off topic. No, I can see that totally. Because I mean, it feels like you did everything right strategically, and then you just like get punished for, you know, not having the equivalent aim advantage. You know, yeah. like you did the yeah. No, I, I and it, to that point, I also like find it frustrating. In my own experience, like when you get like a really good flank, and but you're like behind three of them. And so it was like, mm. you, it takes you because it takes you two seconds to kill one guy. You just you don't even get a chance to kill the guy. It was like halfway through the team turns around and three v one you. Yeah, which is like, you know, if you're playing like Counter Strike, it's a completely opposite experience. It's like you can easily take out three, maybe you know more if you're like really good at flicking because that's like really a bit more flick heavy. Or like me, remember when I played the um, CS2 and it came out and just did an epic flank and I just bought the semi-automatic shotgun and just like obliterated half the enemy team because they didn't mm-hmm. didn't know I was coming and yeah. uh, no one ever uses that gun. So because <laughs> it's just not good, but uh, good if it's good at the scrub level. But yeah, no, all of that stuff. It's uh, it is interesting. I mean, funny enough, that was one of the things that was the issue with the cycle too. You know, like long time to kill lots of shields armor you know being important and um, yeah. 1v3s being extremely rough yeah <laughs> yeah psycho had a lot of issues looking but but anyway yeah. where were we where did we stem this conversation from well just just one of the oh, about arena. Nice yeah. bow on okay. it let's um, tie it up <laughs> i it's that's just kind of my thing is like you know how much variance is going to be there and how much it's going to be you know, ma- like matter. Like in my, for my taste, the variance in Apex early on was just too much. That I didn't. I liked it more as a casual game. I did not like the competitive mm-hmm. side. I mean, there was like multiple issues, but yeah, the 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 part where you landed and you just get absolutely screwed because it was really bad early on, which I won't go into detail why. But yeah, so that's kind of the thing for me is like, you know, I'm gonna shoot the guy and I'm gonna get quote unquote unlucky and I didn't hit his armor gap, whereas he got quote unquote lucky and hit the armor gap and one tapped me. It's just, you know, stuff like that is just kind of is off putting for me. And I yeah. just don't know how far they're going down this road of different stuff. I don't know. I I like Tarkov more as like the survival side, as I've said many times. Yeah, well we'll we'll see. We'll see. The only thing that I'm like slightly concerned about is if they go like, here, everybody is, you know, here's the game. And then like two weeks later, they're just like, by the way, we're changing the whole recall system. We're adding armor plates. We're like, <laughs> it's like for anybody who doesn't play Tarkov, which I mean, they're trying to bring a lot of people in that don't play Tarkov. That's going to be like really confusing. Surely it's just like, hold on, you just released this game. And now you've like, you've changed the recall. You've, you've added a whole bunch of stuff. It's, that's gonna like confuse the hell out of a lot of people, you'd think. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe they won't care. Maybe because they're not invested yet, they won't care. Anybody but, who does yeah, follow Tarkov already the knows the I deal. I don't know. Maybe it won't matter. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to play. Did, did you see some of the teams that got announced? I only saw two. I saw uh, the VP team. And I saw the what's the what's the other team called? Um, the Walker team. Like a, 
Like yeah, the British it. team. What are they called? <laughs> El- they're not called LDI. They're, what what's their name? Um, it's some org that I've never heard of before. Uh, it has like a knight on it. Yeah, like a medieval knight. To find it, so they, they are ITB. Sorry, ITB Esports. Hmm. And so that team consists of Pilbo, Walker, Blank, Blitzer Girl, and Joes. Gonna be fun. Yeah, and then there's a VP EFT team. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't That's know. Virtus Pro for anybody who doesn't keep up with yeah. these things. Not, not that I do particularly, but um, see where announced. Uh, there anyway. is uh, Alan Raska Ali, Artem WTG Morzov, uh, Yaroslav FMX Cruzen, <laughs> Krill Magic 777, Victor <laughs> Hard with a four instead of an A. Um, I think one of them I looked up was like a like played um, Rainbow Six. Like, like I think Magic's account was like just made <laughs> like this year, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't really know. You, yeah, you don't necessarily have the history on. Yeah, I don't. I don't recognize. I mean, you know, it's not like Pasha or. Uh, yeah, I don't recognize any of these. It's one of those things, like Oops. because I don't follow any like yes esports stuff. The only people that I recognize in the teams is always is all from Dota. Yeah. The only thing that I've like semi consistently like I don't I don't even like follow that per se, but you know I just like see more of those events slash go to like random events to do with Dota two. It's gonna be interesting to see because how many teams are there supposed to be? I can't. I can't. Even, I'm not even sure. I'm not um, even sure if they've actually said. It wasn't like eight. I thought they said it was start like. Eight or something. I don't know. Well, I guess I'll have to announce them pretty soon, right? Because I think it starts next week. Well, it does, because, well, hopefully it does, because I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to just be in Germany on my own, you know? Nah. But no, they're, they're, surely they'll announce them next week, you would imagine. Yeah. So, am I going to stay quiet for the next bit? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what yeah, have you I seen, guess, Church? I guess what so. Have you seen? Um, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> I've seen some like things. That. I've seen some things. So there's been a couple of unofficial leaks. Um, not the Nikki leaks. The Church. Well, I mean, I, actual I know unofficial leaks. leaks. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not Nikki leaks. Um, so I saw that someone had leaked that the ETS was testing, uh, mounting and such, which I saw a video of someone doing like a, I guess like a submitting a bug report, which they were able to clip through <laughs> the, um, like a concrete block, you know, I think it was on like on customs, the, uh, power station area. There's like a, Which yeah, I say I say power station. It's got like a, a transformer, and um, it's on customs in like the forest on top of the hill. There's like a giant oh, transformer, yeah, yeah, a I know generator, this thing, a shack, <clears throat> yeah, near to crate. the new gas, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were able to clip through like the concrete block on the transformer by like climbing yeah. up on the barrel, but they had to get like a certain animation, and then they would like. I guess like swing over with like <laughs> throw one hand on the barrel and like swing their hips and legs over. And they were like clip through the transformer, then you could like prone in it and you could see through. I don't, I don't. Oh my god! I can't remember how Tarkov works when you clip through objects if you can shoot through them or not. I can't remember. I think it depends, but I think sometimes you can because I know people That's used to I do thought. that with the ambulance at tunnel on shoreline. Do you remember oh, that people yeah, used to god, clip so into toxic. the ambulance? <laughs> 
Yeah, it was so toxic. And you couldn't yeah. shoot at them. But I think like I think it's one of those it might be one of those weird things where and you know this happened used to happen in like Black Room on Labs as well, where if you had a long gun, the animation for the weapon oh. wasn't tied to the like, you know, the what do you call it? Barrel stuffing animation wasn't right. necessarily tied to the in in game IRL well, I say IRL, the in game guns like physical presence. Mm-hmm. Because in Tarkov the bullet comes out of the barrel. If right. the barrel stuff animation doesn't play soon enough, your weapon clips through the object and then you can shoot through. <laughs> and you used to be able to shoot through the glass in Black Room by standing up on that little table or whatever it was and getting quite close with like a long barreled HK and then just beaming everybody through the bulletproof glass, which I presume that that got fixed a long time ago. I mean, I don't remember ever seeing it getting fixed, but I'm guessing it did. I'm sure I, mean, it I haven't seen it for a while. Let's put it this way I haven't seen that done yeah. for ages. So I'm just guessing that it is. Otherwise, I imagine I would have seen more clips of it. But yeah, I never saw like an announcement or people saying like, oh, it's fixed. It just seems to have disappeared off into the background. So presumably that was made a bit more accurate. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe it depends. It depends on like how much your gun sticks out of whatever it is that you're like sat inside of. Mm-hmm. But there's going to be inevitably like a million of these things all over the place on yeah. all the maps. Like the game's just so complicated that there's... It's just so immensely hard to introduce something like vaulting now. Yeah, I mean, like it's like I like I've memed about like it's inevitable on wipe day. There's gonna be you know these exploits and glitches. Like it's just it's just inevitable. I mean, so um, many people uh, have been in my chat whenever we've been talking about the upcoming like stuff, being like, dude, I'm like unbinding that key. Like I'm not vaulting until I've seen the first person do the you know the Skyrim mammoth like or whatever the giant thing where they go. You try and vault over something and then you just like go <laughs> oh, yeah. six million feet in the air and then like come back down and just land and die. Well, so, you know, I'm not touching it until I've seen the first clip of that because it's inevitably going to happen. Well, no, that, that's that's <laughs> yeah, that, that's not what I had in mind, but that would be even <laughs> even more tragic. I mean, I, I just kind of assumed there's going to be like you know stuff like that, you know, especially on the exploit side, like. Because you gotta think too, it's not like they, I mean, I assume, maybe BSG and Infinite Wisdom did, but I assume that they didn't design the maps, you know, early on with, and having in mind, oh yeah, we're gonna add this vaulting feature, it's gonna work exactly like this. You of know? course not, And right? we're gonna build the map around this, you know. So yeah. I can only imagine, you know, there's gonna be spots where you can just vault outside the map, or vault, vault into places you weren't supposed to, or they didn't think you could, or didn't intend, you know. There's gonna be fun stuff like that, like, you know. The new the vaulting that just adds like a new dynamic of way you could traverse around the map potentially that you previously couldn't like maybe uh, you know probably not but maybe you could like vault on top of dorms like you wouldn't you're not supposed to or yeah who know, knows because there's enough like little ledges and stuff around that like maybe someone will find a way you know especially yeah. once you've got like higher levels of strength some of the guys with like max strength or whatever can like right. jump up here and then vault up that bit or do whatever yeah. Which brings up yeah, another interesting easy. thought I had is like, now strength is kind of weird because you level up, you jump higher, but do you vault? Does it scale with vaulting? Because vaulting kind of like solves what strength levels were supposed to solve in a sense. Oh yeah, kind of. So sort of what diminishes the value of like max strength? Just slightly. I mean, it's just some ways. It, it's just a half of a thought I had mm. because the other leak I saw was that Currently, I mean, this is all subject to change and all rumors, of course, but uh, in my opinion, the leaker <laughs> said that you could, uh, it was like only, you could only vault at your hip height, essentially, which, I don't know, I mean, I, I have a very, you know, in my head, I have a, a mind, um, I'm like, in my mind, when I think of vaulting, I think of this one game mod that I played that had, like, a vaulting mechanic, but you could, like, jump and, like, climb, like, a fence, for example, which is, like, like not... like, separate things. Like, mean? jump is one thing, like, vaults another, like, climbing a full fence is another. Sure, like, all kind but, of, like, like in, in other yeah. words, like, you, you walk up to a wall, and it's, like, it gives you a symbol that pops up and you just hold that symbol and you start like just climbing right oh, and whether it's like you know hip height or like a fence you'll just like cl- climb it based off the right animation and if it's too tall then you just fall back down 
But anyways, my point is like I was kind of surprised, like intrigued that it's only hip height because then it's like if something's like just above hip height, then you like you can't vault it. I Means you have to jump it, which is kind of annoying when it's just like you know what I mean. It's like one millimeter above the height that you can't vault. So now it's like this thing that's just like barely above my hip. I can't vault, but I have to jump over. Like it's just I don't know. I just kind of would have thought it would have been more. You know, same with like a window. Like let's say you're trying to get in a window and it's like too tall up. If you yeah. can't jump in, then it's like you can't vault either. I don't know. It's just just kind of my again, I have like a very specific idea in my head based off like entirely different games. So it's not not to say that that's like the only way or the right way to do it, but if that's turns out to be true, that's gonna you know, it's kind of a little disappointing for me. But yeah, like I, I'm not even sure exactly what I would like want. I think like the when I when I think about the system, I would want to be able to go through, say, like the customs. You know where you have to do the little funny jump up the the rubbish. I'd want to be able to vault through a window like that. That's kind of what I have in my head. But like really tall walls and things, I'm not sure if I care about climbing over them in Tarkov. I'm not sure if that's like necessary. And then like little objects like I'm, not, I'm actually not sure i don't really know i don't really know all, all i all i all i know that i want is making sure that we have a different key you know just so it's like it's not like jump slash vault on one key that's the main thing that i want like however it gets implemented like that'll get refined over time but just want to make sure that we have different keys for doing it so because then pubg has that right and it's yeah the model I you think of because then it means that like if you say like so you can't vault over something you don't just stand there jumping like an idiot because <laughs> you want like you want a vault a failed vault to do nothing to do nothing yeah yeah whereas like a jump just jumps kind of no matter what right um so they're very different separate actions and again like for the immersion like side of the game your pmc knows what he can climb over you don't right because you're a dude sat behind the computer so you don't want your pmc just like leaping at the wall because it just it just it's so bad it's just such a bad yeah. experience you know yeah um so that's that's just the thing for me i just want to make sure that that is the case uh otherwise yeah i mean it's going to be it's probably going to be it's just going to be tricky right there's just so many places where it's going to be problematic and going to be Presumably tough when it first comes out, and then will it'll be get refined like a lot of these things. So I don't know. Well, I did see another leak where it looks like you can set a keybind, and you can also have it set to auto. But again, these are all just rumors. Who knows what's really going to happen? And it's all subject to change. Even if it was true at one point in time. Um, but I think I think if that's to be the case, that's a good middle ground like i mean it's it, it's good to have it's nice to have the option well for either wars yeah indoors. yeah exactly yeah we, we, well, we always said like you know the most customizability yeah always is the best because the then people can do it however they like which they did do when they did recent stuff like medical things you know like double click to consume click. yeah yeah it's like it came out and everyone was just like why and then they were like oh now you can change it so that you know you, you have it on off just for medical mm -hmm. items you know and i have it on for just medical now because I trained myself not to eat the food in the stash. <laughs> the self-restraint, not to just consume an entire <laughs> bottle of moonshine. Um, so I have it on in Rave. So now it's like the perfect middle ground of the two, which is great. And that was good because it's like the system itself is the hardest thing to implement. The config afterwards is presumably quite straightforward. And they just like went, oh, yeah, okay. And then added it so that it is kind of item specific. But yeah, we'll see. Yep. Um, the only other thing that I heard that was very vague, I didn't really understand, was something to do with ankle high objects are even worse than before now. I I don't I don't make of that what you will. I don't know what that means. I I have no idea how that could. I would just yeah. I have no idea. But anyways, it's gonna be fun. A white day. I just can't wait for the YouTube videos to come out. 
these top 10 glitches spots you must know about on wipe day. <laughs> How I achieved 60,000 feet in the first 15 minutes of wipe day. How to get into labs of, or how to get into red room with no red card. <laughs> how to get into labs from woods using this one slingshot <laughs> trick. <laughs> how to, how to mount your way inside of a ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Get yourself back up onto the top of idea. Do you remember people used to do that as well? Oh God, yeah. I, I would love them all. Yeah, I would love to know how to do that back in the day, because I love stuff like that. Especially if it involves, like, quote-unquote, trick jumping. It's like, weird jumps you have to do to abuse game engines and such. Mm. But I miss those days. It's quite fun. It's quite, uh, it's quite, like, inventive. You know? Mm. It is quite inventive. We will see. Yep. Maybe not too much longer. So what have you been up to then, Church? What have you, what have you been up to? Have you been enjoying the, oh, the delights? I feel like there's actually quite a lot to play and a lot going on at the minute. You know, I've been doing this and that. I've been quite busy recently, but, you know, we've been looking at some other games. Um, actually, it's, it's funny just before we talk about, like, Naquan, because I know you ended up playing a bit more of that, so we should talk about that a bit because I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. We're, the day before... I did actually, the day, the day before the, the launch of the game was actually quite funny. Just the number of memes about, you know, it's the day before, the day before, hey! <laughs> like, everyone had to make that joke, yeah. obviously. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I, I haven't played it. I haven't really watched any f- footage of it either. So I'm like literally just going off like anecdotal, just consumption and absorption of information through the internet. It feels like my short take on it is that everybody is desperate to hate it that the game isn't very good, but maybe it has, like, you know, maybe there is some potential. Like, it's been released way too early, but, like, it's not necessarily completely awful in sort of a conceptual sense. Just, like, it just needs, like, a lot, 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 lot more work. From the people who've been a bit more balanced about it, like, you know, maybe it could become something good one day, but, like, right now it isn't. That seems to be the the general take. Is it, like, a multiplayer game? Apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, it's an extraction, like, Zombie survival, basically. Oh. I, dude, I thought they've already like released that game once, and it had like a ton of controversy. But maybe I'm like thinking of a different game. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. The day before is the one that like it got pushed oh, back they like did, nine they times. They did release it. Originally? They did release it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just like a lot of apparently a lot of like precandescent stuff. It's being like review bombed on. I think thing is like people already were expecting the game to be bad and. Right. I know it's not. I know it's not good. <laughs> I tell a lie. I've, I've seen. A, I've seen a few clips here and there. Like it. It's not like it's not a great game, okay. but I don't think it's necessarily like the worst. Like the from the most balanced takes that I've seen, some people were like, if this was, if it was positioned as a like early alpha snapshot, people would possibly have accepted it a bit better. But because they've like released it mm-hmm. as as like early access and taken money for it, now people are like returning it on Steam on mass after playing an hour. There's like game breaking stuff where like I did see one where you like load in and then the first line of dialogue happens and then you fall through the floor and die. <laughs> is pretty funny so like the thing is the game itself is a meme so people love to like people love to review bomb it it's got like 15 percent on steam or something like that is fine or whatever saw that video that just referenced. <laughs> can't make this shit up man yeah um i saw hayes trying to fight a zombie and it it took him like i don't even know the video is like two minutes of him shooting the zombie in the head before it dies like it's just just crazy. i don't know whether that's part of the progression or something but yeah, it's quite funny. The, the, to be honest, there's nothing funnier than like janky game glitches, though. They do actually make me laugh, to be fair. Um, but yeah, yeah, lots of people said like it was supposed to be open world. It's not open world. It's a map. The whole map is probably the size of like Streets of Tarkov. It was supposed to have VoIP. They do actually have footage of VoIP, but VoIP isn't in the game. So that was presumably just a lie. Like, this is the thing. And a lot of people are like, why anybody's surprised? I don't know. But a lot of people are like, you know, they, they lied and the trailers are just dis- dis- misleading. misleading and deceiving. The new word I've just made up. There, it's a misleading trailer. They've said there's features that they, you know, aren't that they have, but they just aren't in. 
um, and based on what they said. I think that's why people are, you know, wanting to hit it with a big stick, which is which is fine. You know, I don't don't, don't mind people hitting it with a big stick, but uh, I I'm always, I don't know. I believe uh, I'd like to believe in redemption if there is if there is redemption. You know, certain games have come back. Like I don't even really want to compare them because, like, I think Cyberpunk was, you know, it was a much more complete game than this on launch. But uh, you know, that had a, a terrible launch, and people slated that game, and now people love it and say that the game's brilliant because they've worked on it for. You know, two years or whatever it is, and fix all the problems. I know that day before Bobby <laughs> isn't the same. Like that's not like the, the game's not like content rich but buggy. The game's like buggy has no content. You know, da 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 da. But uh, yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's just an interesting little tidbit out of the internet because everybody's talking about it. So I thought I'd just kind of like summarize what I have seen <laughs> from the community field. The Steam reviews is overwhelmingly negative. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like I feel kind like I feel kind of bad, but then again, they charge people money for it, I mean, so it's like yeah. kind of fair enough. Like I understand, um, but you can always like yeah, you could you can play it, you can you can return it if you play under two hours, or you've or it's like two hours, it's like two hours or twelve days or something. I think something like that. I'm not sure, but either which way, I don't like to see stuff get review bombed because. My personal feeling on it is that a lot of people just jump on the bandwagon without actually thinking about it. They just want to be like, sure. oh, you know, they just want to meme on it and just like just troll the, the devs or whatever. And it's like, yeah, maybe they've done some crappy stuff. Like maybe it's not been done in the best way. Maybe they have misled people. I don't know. But like maybe they got way in over their head and they're trying. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, try, I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't like to see stuff just get like completely destroyed. Like why? I, I don't understand like why they would even release it in this state. Like really bizarre. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I don't know. I could speculate. I guess well, like, that's well, we can't, what we do. <laughs> we see the do or die. You know, we can't like not release it now. Like otherwise, no one's ever going to believe us ever again. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think sometimes some projects just are like doomed to fail. So it's like you might as well just be, you know, be done with it. Like you've you've already sunk so much resources into it, I don't, I don't know. It's yeah. I I mean I, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I mean if you get your enjoyment out of it via the, the janky bugs, it's your money. You know, do it, do what you do what you will. Yeah, somebody said that like there was some building mechanics in there that were actually quite good. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. Be like, I'm sure there's some good stuff. Like, uh, there's yeah. someone in, in chat, Ash, saying, like, I watched Deadly Slop playing it, and it looked pretty good, but I also only heard about it in November, so I had no expectations. You see, because it's like, a lot of people come out the gate, like, and whether it's good, bad, or whatever, right, that's up for you to decide, but, like, a lot of people come out of the gate, like, after the years of speculation and whatever, they come out of the gate expecting it to be terrible, expecting to hate it, and I think I even said something along those lines when I was asked about it, pre Maybe, I can't remember whether we talked about it on here, whether it was on, on the stream, and I was like, I'm not even invested in it. But just based on what people have said, I'm, I'll be amazed if it even turns out to be anything, if it's not just like some grey box kind of super <laughs> early alpha thing, whatever. Just, just one way that people have, have talked about it. So it's like, it's very difficult for a lot of people to come at it with an open mind and be like, is there even a chance that this becomes good? You know, is there, is there a way it becomes good? If it does, like, then, then great, right? And then, you know, there are, have been some people who've at least like had some fun with it. It's not necessarily the best game ever, but... Maybe there's some redemption for it. I don't, I don't know. Not sure. But speaking of like early access stuff, how was NAC one? So we, we chatted last time, just as it had come out. I would played two raids and you'd played one, I think. And then you told me that you'd played like a bunch more over the weekend, which I didn't get the chance to do because I was busy um, last weekend, unfortunately. I didn't get a chance to play much more of it. But I'm fascinated to hear what you, what you made of it and like what other content that was in there. Because I'm still not entirely sure as to what the full scope is. As yeah, so demo, at least. I guess it was like Saturday, like the day after the podcast. I was like, just wrapping. I was like, I was gonna take care of some things, and I was like, well, I'll just play one game of Naquan, give it a real try. It's like the only times I actually played it was like once, you know, the day it, it came out, and I just like really just memed around, just like see if I could break the game, break the AI or something. Had like no real stakes in my head, and just you know whatever, just like throwing. And then I played again during the podcast, which again was just like throwing. Um, 
And so then Saturday, I was like, okay, fine. I'll try it. I'll try one real game, actually, trying. And once I actually cared about the stakes and played, I got invested in it. And I actually really liked it. Like, I was like, okay. I, I kinda, kinda, I'm kind of digging it. You know, I really like the, the stealth. Emphasis on stealth there. There's a lot of, like, <laughs> sneaking and not alerting zombies and then using the environment to your advantage. Like, you can throw objects and zombies will react to, like, those objects yeah. being thrown and there's like a whole sound element when you're walking sprinting crouching and so like you know, sometimes you'll see like another player and you'll be they won't see you and you're sneaking and you're like and they're also sneaking like oh i'm gonna mess with this guy to throw a brick at them and uh, you could hit like a car for example like mm. and the car alarm will go off and all the zombies will run to the area so they're like crap <laughs> they <have to> run. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun actually but um yeah i'm I'm, I'm try- sorry i'm trying to see if i can pull up some footage because i thought i had i had some did you record a bunch did I, you stream think, some um yeah i think i might have <laughs> i did <laughs> uh i did record some um i think there's the actual recordings i don't think i saved any replays um yeah i think because i had made like a video <laughs> i was gonna make a video but I know I just have the footage and I did. It's, it's, it's funny because like my first two attempts were just absolute fails. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like footage that, for all its purposes, essentially just dead footage. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we gotta do that whole voiceover again. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's actually pretty neat. So one of the one of the interesting parts of it with like the mechanics. You have this like tablet that yeah. you get your quests from in the in the raid. So like here I'm like showing the, the tablet slash the map. And what's interesting is an actual item that's equipped to your character. And like you always start with it. But if you kill another player and you loot their tablet, then you also get their personal extract and their quest. Hmm. And the quests like rewards are pretty good, like actually very good, I would say. So there's like an extra, like uh, I don't want to say an extra incentive, because in my opinion, in like these like survival resource games, PvP is like generally speaking very risky and like oftentimes not worth worth it in like a vacuum, yeah. because you're having to expend resources to get their resources, which they're also expending to like defend themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, oftentimes I would fight a guy, right? And because you have like armor, like helmets and vests and stuff, like by the time I kill them, their vests would be like destroyed, so it's gone. Like you can't even lose; it's just like it just vanishes and stuff. <laughs> so like, like you know what I mean? It's like you don't get the. It's like oh, that guy looks juicy, but by the time you like combat him, you know, it's like you're you're spending your own resources, like healing fighting him, losing your armor, losing their armor, their healing, you know, it's like almost not worth it. But because you get the tablet, it makes it like extra interesting because now it's like, okay, suddenly it's like if I fight this guy, like maybe I'll get a better extract, maybe I'll get his quest and then I could try to do his quest and my quest. And then some of the quests you get is you have to actually get another tablet is your actual quest. So like mm. you're incentivized the PvP doubly so in, in this sense. That's so quite I, cool. Yeah, I really liked, I actually really liked that element. Um, like, it's, there was a couple times where I would fight a guy. <laughs> or no, like, what, okay, what time I sneaked up on this fight that was going on? Because there was a revolver shots going off. Ooh. And, yeah, there's, like, one gun in the game. So, like, okay, <clears throat> it's mainly a melee, l- l- let me just briefly describe it for those that aren't it's, it's a melee zombie extraction survival third person stealth game. And you know you do the same Tarkov stuff. You lose stuff. Uh, you like I said, the quest or in, there's traders to level up. Whatever. It's the same kind of simple general idea there. But you have uh, personal extracts, and then once the zone, because there's a zone kind of like darker and darker, where the radius um, ring grows as the time goes on. So once that reaches a certain point, then these like public zones open, which are like the you know, they're extracts for everyone, kind of like mm-hmm. in the corners, opposite corners of where the ring started on the map. Um, 
so yeah, it's <laughs> there was one time where I walked I walked up to these revolver shots, right? And I tried to see what's going on. There was like three dead bodies, and I had saw one guy running away, and I thought for sure that was a revolver guy because he had like he was like full he looked like he had like all the stuff on. He had like a sledgehammer too, which I haven't like seen many of. Like I knew it was probably a rare item. You get him in knock one. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, surely he's gonna loot these guys. So I waited for like two minutes. And he didn't loot them. I'm like, okay, surely he's got the revolver and he's just like watching the bodies for vain. I waited some more. It did nothing happened. So I was like, fine, I went to loot him. And one guy had like four tablets on him. <laughs> so I looted all those tablets. I had like all these quests to do. <laughs> Cause some of them were like you have to go to a specific spot on the map, you have to interact with something or loot something or whatever. I'm presumed uh, you don't have time to do them all, right? Yeah, you don't have time to do them all. But like now I got like all these extracts options available, so I'm trying to like and I've wasted like, you know, five minutes or so. So the ring's like growing there in this time span, you know. It's <laughs> it was a lot of fun. The the biggest gripe for me was the melee, like the combat mm. was like really janky sometimes. Like sometimes you would just like melee and you would just like phase through whatever you're hitting and not hit him yeah. or like the zombie would like teleport and like that was a problem from... for me it felt like <sighs> original daisy like the mod that was how it felt for me like that's how daisy felt it's like you'd be behind a door and then like zombies would be like coming through the door and stuff or like you know they just like teleport around you or you like run at them and they're suddenly in front of you and like just all of that kind of stuff you try to hit them but then they'd like glitch and move to the side so you miss like i just hate that stuff like when it's not smooth it just feels Feels bad. I mean, this is like pre-alpha, early, super early test, so the networking's probably shot and not smooth, yeah. and it's just bad. But yeah, it's it's unfortunate because, like, if that is your combat, that's basically the combat, right? Melee at the minute. Mm -hmm. So if that is your combat system and it's like really jank, it's like okay, I I don't know. <laughs> it just feels kind of bad. But I uh, will see. Maybe, maybe they can tidy it up. Yeah, I mean, if they get that tidied up, that will definitely help a lot. Because I think that was, like, you know, the biggest, I mean, just, like, a really, it's one of the things, like, if they don't get that fixed, I think the game is pretty much dead. Because mm. it's such a, uh, such a, like, frustrating point of contention that, like, I could easily see players, like, quitting over, you know. Um, but, overall, like I said, I had, really, I had a lot of fun. I got to use the revolver a couple of times, which was, like. <laughs> did you get them off people, or did you buy them? No, so, like, again, you know, I got them mostly from, like, doing quests. I mean, oh, okay. eventually I could buy them as I leveled up the traders, but, like... Like, how high did you get in terms of citizen rank or whatever? Because uh, you, like, you purchase like, your citizen rank, don't you? The highest tier was, like, a million point five, or 1.5 million. And mm -hmm. then the next one above that was, like, 8 million, which I was, like, Ooh. not going to reach you know on day the final day of the thing like how far through the bar was that is that like getting like three quarters <sighs> it was of the probably way like through four, or like four four out of ten maybe if i had to guess maybe okay maybe five out of ten i don't <clears throat> i don't think so but it's about about halfway about halfway yeah i don't know i maybe it was like seven so maybe it was like three or four out of seven i can't say for sure but it's yeah there's i think there's like it was a fun game and i'd be down to play it again for sure absolutely mm. like the like like i said they can get the melee combat issue fixed because i think it's a it's maybe a networking thing i'm no i don't know what i'm talking about but i i kind of assume it's a bit of a networking thing like the ai is network side in so, like, if the network says it's here and you're here and, you know, you swing on your client and it's, like, delayed, because I, I don't know. It, yeah. It's hard, it it's hard like to say. Like, that. like, there's there's some genuine times where it's like, okay, I, I understand that technically I missed that because, you know, I, I swung, I hit the zombie, he reacts, <laughs> he, like, bends over and I swing again and, like, I miss it by a pixel. Like, it's frustrating, but, like, I kind of can see that, but it feels pretty bad. So you have to, like, time it just, just right sometimes. But there's definitely times where the melee was just, like, and the zombies, like, was just, like, way off. Like, the hit, de like, yeah, the hit detection, too. Like, the there's, like, bats and hammers that, like, you can wide swing, and it was just, like, the hit detection felt so wide, too, that sometimes, man, I wish I, I 
I got to have a clip in here where I just absolutely bullied this one guy <laughs> with the bat. I, I felt genuinely felt bad um, on how much I bullied <laughs> this guy. I think maybe Did it's you here. find sometimes that when fighting zombies, at least with the basic weaponry, you didn't even have enough stamina to actually like kill them? You have to somehow like hit them a bit and then run around a bit to wait for your arm stamina to get back up. Like I found that even if I was hitting like four or five times, my arm stamina would go away. And it's like, you're not allowed to attack now because your stamina is at zero. Yeah. Well, you could, but you would do like a really slow swing, mm. which was okay. I mean, maybe they changed that or maybe I just didn't do it right. I um, they were well, it, you would do a slow accurate. swing, but like it was a really like it was like 2.5 times slower than your normal attack, right? If you try to attack with no stamina, but mm. if you got hit during that time period, and it would just like cancel your, well, your attack, oh, right? So yeah. That might have explained what you were seeing really? with uh, it. Yeah, I mean, most like a lot of the early weapons were just like you got, uh, you know, like you couldn't kill them in your full arm stamina. Yeah, you know, it Which was is, like maybe that's fine. Maybe that's a balancing thing, right? You're supposed to run away, and you can run away relatively easily. You can yeah. lose the zombies quite swiftly just with a, a quick vault here and there. Yeah, I was kind of surprised by that feature, but like you know, or that way it's done. But I guess it kind of works because, like you said, you're like you're supposed to run versus like fighting them. Yeah, because like, so even once you get... quite easily, can't you? Yeah, which at first sounds you know odd, but given in the context that it's, you know, it takes like a bajillion hits to kill one zombie, mm -hmm. then maybe that, that works fine, right? And also, like, you have to, like, reset into, I mean, maybe you could do it into a building, but unless you, like, really know the area, you have to, like, reset into, like, the back alleys or whatever. So it's not like you're just stumbling across tons of loot. You know, you have to leave wherever you were, whatever you were doing, whatever building you were trying to get towards. So if you were trying to go towards your personal exit, you know, you have to disappear off into some other random part of the map and then try and figure it out from there. So not necessarily, like, it just it just stops you from just being dead and allowing you to carry on so you can play more, which I think mm -hmm. is okay. I think that's fine. And people hear it. It's like, again, it's going to be eventually the people are going to be the dangerous thing. Like right now, it's like when you first like start playing Tarkov, you're not even worried about other PMC, about PMCs just because scabs kill you. And that's going to be what this game will be probably, right? Everyone will have all of the zombies figured out and it'll then be like, oh, somebody's set off the zombies here and you know, you PV, people who are PvP hunting will go after you for your tablet and like that kind of thing. Like that's how it, I imagine the emergent gameplay will end up going. Um, have you found a clip of <laughs> I found you... the clip I bullied <laughs> because the Beating bat swings the bat. so wide like... so it's very hard for them to get out of the way even with the bad hit detection <laughs> because the bat's like a really wide swing yeah I mean <laughs> just I, can't I, guess leave. I remember it differently it's not that the hit detection is bad per se I just felt like it was too great and maybe with the networking it was a little weird or some some fights where it was just like it's just like, dude, what is going on? But yeah, what's interesting is because the armors rate differently against different weapon types. Is like initially when I fought this guy, I had the I had my blade out, but then I knew based off playing and looking at the stuff that his armor, like his vest, is like rated really highly against blades. So mm. I switched to the blunt weapon to like be you know more effective. So I I I like there's like. I don't know. I actually really, like I said, I really liked the game. I think it's a pretty fun game, but you definitely, you know, it's going to be one of those things that's not for everyone. Like, I don't enjoy third person, generally speaking. I guess this one's a little bit less egregious because weaponry is, like, really toned down. Yeah, it's like it's a lot better in melee. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's not as egregious. Like, fine, I can, like, corner peek or ghosting or whatever you want to call it, but at least it's not, like, you know, I wish I had a, a revolver. I don't think I have any revolver gameplay, but man, dude, the revolver, the revolver was pretty interesting because it just having it on your character, like equipped, like out holstered or whatever, or unholstered, it would like zoom in your FPS or your field of view slightly. So maybe mm. lose like 10 degrees or something. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit more. And then when you actually ADS'd, you went in the first person into Iron Sights, and you lost even more FOB. 
<laughs> and it was like, dude, you take one step while ADS, and it's like Tarkov walking with a broken leg of no painkillers. It was like oh. super exaggerated. Like everything's like it's super slow to pull out. These like super exaggerated. The recoil is insane. Like it's, it was like so hard to tell. Like even where my bullets were going, like, if I even hit them half the time too. But it felt so like evil killing people with revolver. They were just like, you know, you see a guy or whatever, you sh- you, know, you sneak in, you blast them once, and they're like freaking out, running away, just like, <laughs> they die. it's just like, dude, you feel so evil, man. I loved it. And it's crazy, too, because the, the bullets are like super rare, right? Mm. And I mean, they're worth, like, you can buy them from the vendor, but they're worth like, they're worth like 70000 for one bullet. That is a lot. It like is when a I was lot. playing the, the items, like the high value items that I was finding, was so the, the crappy items were selling for like 3K, mm-hmm. 4K, 5K. And then the high value items were selling that I picked up were like 40, 50, 60. Yeah. So like the GPU, I think, was like 70K or yeah. something. So that's something like one like that. bullet for the revolver. <laughs> it's just, just to put it into context. <laughs> but that's what made the quest really incentivizing because you could get like one or two bullets from the quest, right? Mm, right so it's I like, I, 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 I liked it a lot. Um, like I said, the one one other mechanic we'll talk about quickly, and then we'll wrap it up for that sex segment is crafting. I didn't realize this, but you could craft and raid, which like really threw me for a loop. And I assume that's because it levels with your citizen rep, like your trader level, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you could like take different materials that you would loot, and then make like armors, like weapons, even. Of certain, and I assume that scales as you level up the traders, which is really is really neat because now I can sort of see it how you know you start out. Let's say you like broke, you have nothing, <clears throat> but you could just like kind of loot trash cans and whatever, and and um like craft decent stuff. You know, if you're if if you leveled up. That's like, interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's like there's, 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 there feels like there's some soft protection to, um, because even, even in the case where you have nothing, let's say you're dirt poor, you don't have any trade level, whatever. I noticed like in the streets, um, like basically anywhere, you can just find lumber laying around mm-hmm. and you can just use that as like a weapon right off the bat, I think. So like they give you yeah. like, because when you die and respawn, you have like one bandage, and I don't, I don't remember if you get a weapon or not, but I, you get like very minimal stuff because there's no container, right? Mm. Um, but it's like very easy to just play the game and have stuff, you know. And then with the crafting, it's at least the is, basics. I guess that's like yeah. the other alternative, isn't it, to like the white armor, white weapon, whatever that you get on um, Dark and Darker, which is like oh, the default kit. You know, here it is. Whereas in this, it's like, okay, well, you know, you can just use like basic stuff from the map. There's like wood everywhere, just sticks and what you right. know, bricks or whatever it might right. be. Like two by four plank is like one of the weapons. You could use that stuff and it's just all over the place. It's like another way of going about it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's I, interesting. I dig it. I mean, my only, my only, you know, like I said, the combat's my gripe, but my other gripe is. It's the studio from Data Diver, which, if you don't know, gained some controversy because it won, like, it's a, it won, it's like an indie, praise indie game, but it's actually just a development studio owned and created by Nixon, and their, like, mission statement is, we're gonna make fun games again, or something like this, which is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just kinda hate it because... It's Nexon, and Nexon is, in my opinion, has like some really gross practices of like microtransactions in the past. Maybe they've I haven't played a Nexon game in quite some time. I only know of them recently because of um the whole scandal. There's that about dark, as well. about dark and darker, yeah. <laughs> There's that as well, but yeah. You know. Thing is, like, I understood because there was the whole deal about like the indie games like competition thing. Mm-hmm. I understand why people were kind of annoyed about that because, like, yeah, if you're a dev that's like wholly owned by another dev, like, can you really be called an indie dev studio? Like, yeah. I don't really know. Like, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they are completely arms length. Who knows? 
Um, presumably well, not. But... <laughs> I just feel like it's in the word independent. Like, how can you be independent when you're owned by like a mega corporation? It just yeah, it seems a bit strange. Um, yeah. But so, like, outside of that, like, I can see why that's annoying for the game studio themselves. But I'm not really like I, I'm not. I don't really care that much about like i'm not somebody to like boycott like a series of games because of that so to speak but yeah there's some mm. there's some like funny stuff about and, it, and it's next and whatever you know what's actually a really weird turn of events you know that game that i always talk about which is like that um the, the one from like back in the day that i used to love that like rts mmo thing that's actually nexon i only realized recently what the magic game magic no the, the, no no the one ages ago the um it was like the, the mmo rts with like uh the permanent battle, a bit like Planet Side or whatever, but like a RTS oh, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I played like years ago. It's like that was actually a Nexon game. I only yeah. re realized recently. It's quite funny because it's a old time. South Korean game. Did they, yeah. did they have microtransactions of the wazoo? It Pay wasn't that stuff. crazy back then. It was. It was. Um. That was really? so. That was so long ago. That was back before microtransactions were really a thing, and it was the membership era of gaming. You remember like when RuneScape had RuneScape Premium, these dudes had Premium, like everyone had like a membership scheme where you paid like, you know, £10 a month or something. And yeah. you got like, you got like whatever, you got like access to some other stuff, you, you know, but mm. it wasn't like necessarily game breaking. This was like before, like when, when it was like kind of annoying, but like wasn't as annoying as microtransactions can be. Because microtransactions mm. can be okay sometimes, but like, you know, at their extreme end, they're like really, really awful. But this was back when like nobody dared. <laughs> um, so I'm sure it, I mean it got a lot worse since then. I mean, when when did that one even come out? I think that was like 2001 or something like that. Was uh, yeah, what I'm talking about maybe, maybe no, it must have been later than that. Must have been later than that. It must have been like 2000. And, I'm gonna actually get another look. I mean, yeah, that's still, but that's definitely earlier than what I was thinking. So yeah, that that, that checks out. Maybe maybe it was later. It was 2001. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, and it was actually okay. So it was released by uh, the preceding company's Nexon, actually, KRU Interactive. Look at that. They weren't even called that. They then, that, which then became Nexon. Like, it's that old. 2001, dude. Insane. Yeah. So, like, back then, ago. back then, that was, that was the rage with all this stuff, right? It was like membership of, of various things. I never became a, a RuneScape member. I had some friends who were RuneScape members because their mum and dad let them pay for <laughs> RuneScape membership. And I was, I remember I was, I was always like, I don't. I don't think I ever asked, but I was always a little bit like a little bit envious back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's actually a funny thing. The original group of my IRL friends that I play with originated around RuneScape. Actually, interesting. Doesn't surprise me. It's when uh... we were eleven or twelve. Yeah, everyone was playing we RuneScape back then. Yeah, it seems like. And uh, yeah, we found, we actually met. Basically through RuneScape, then that formed our original circle of friends. It's mad to think. Still going strong to this day. <laughs> now everyone just plays Warhammer games. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, good stuff. Um, I think that's it for other games, right? I don't think that I've I've not played anything else in the meanwhile. Um. I don't know if you have. Um, the finals, I think, is finally like launching its, you know, thing, like its actual season or whatever, which I missed. I skipped out on the last playtest. Mm. Um, I think I'll play it for a bit and not, you know, just just casually. I like it as a fun, chaotic game. It, it's kind of like Battle Bit, but in the way that there's destructible environments, but, you know, yeah. actual. <laughs> I know you said you more than it. one polygons <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm getting very distracted by sorry <laughs> sell in chat said i knew someone who insisted runescape was called run escape and not runescape he's still an idiot now <laughs> <laughs> i literally never even thought of that but yeah i guess you could interpret it that way runner escape uh, well that's funny i never ended up playing finals yeah it's okay i mean was it free it was free right yeah yeah, it's another Nexon <laughs> game, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I mean, the uh, the I guess the landscape's changed enough where now it's like Battle Pass. It's like during Battle Pass, but man, dude, I used to play some Nexon games that were just like 
so bad at microtransactions. It was mm. so pay to win. It was so annoying. Can't yeah, maybe we've I come full circle. Do you think we've like gone all the way around now at this point, where it's like it was it was okay back in the day, and then it got really really bad, and then now we've kind of come full circle because people just like won't accept it. So now we're you know there are games that do it that like harvest on a small number of people who are like are willing to pay, and then the mass market games where yeah you do things that are acceptable like cosmetics, battle pass, like stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the way it's gone. Maybe it's okay-ish now. I'm sure there's still some games that are terrible, but like the big games typically aren't now because they get such huge backlash. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the deciding factor. I mean, you know what? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is just the backlash, but I just, I don't know because a part of me feels that a lot of the money is coming from the whales and like. If the whales are buying skins or they're buying pay to win items, like it doesn't really matter as long as they're paying for the game, you know what I mean? But maybe, I don't know, maybe the backlash is enough to where there's just not enough appeal. I'm not sure. I feel like it's almost like a two tier system now. It's like the AAA games can't afford the backlash because they need to market to like a wide base of people and the games cost a lot of money to make. Whereas the some of these like smaller games that are like, more like mobile games and things like that can afford to not have as many people and to you know, prey on the whales, kind of as you put it. Because they're small, yeah. they're not going to get like as big backlash. Some people will enjoy it. Some people will be willing to pay. I feel like there's almost that like two tier of stuff. I just don't think the big devs can afford to do that anymore. Just because they, they need just a ton of people to buy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the markets are different because Marvel Snap, you know, is like a mobile game. Um, is that pay to win? Has that got micros in it? Was that okay? It's got micros, but I wouldn't say it's pay to win. Like you can't really like I I don't I don't I don't know if you can technically pay your way to like progress. You yeah. Know? Like I think there might be a cap on it. Like that's one of the things they did in marketing was like you just can't pay to progress, but I don't know how like true that is. But essentially most of the stuff is like cosmetic like you can pay a little bit to progress faster but it's like really expensive right so like mm. the game's like basically <clears throat> especially nowadays the economy has only gotten better for like the average you know everyday player like it's got yeah the, the costs to like acquire cards have gotten significantly less and it, yeah the, the game's kind of just like funded by whales who buy variants and packs and you know stuff it's just it's interesting because as long as they keep selling cosmetics and as long as the whales keep buying the cosmetics it's like just kind of a win-win because then uh, you know they'll so far they've only made it easier to acquire mm -hmm. stuff so it's i don't know it's very interesting but that's a I... different market though like i said yeah mobile, so exactly because like back when i was playing hearthstone mm -hmm. i mean hearthstone is like technically pay to win yeah i mean it basically is sort of because if you want to compete the thing is though like i never i never cared it didn't matter to me as a player in hearthstone because it's like skill-based matchmaking if someone has bought a ton more stuff yeah see i hate and, that and they're the same skill level as me right they will be at a higher mmr so i won't meet them so i will be playing against people who are like either the same skill level as me with the same stuff or worse than me with better cards or better than me with worse cards does that make sense so like it's always kind of because it's skill based because it's mmr based i don't think it shows you but it, it's because it's mmr based it kind of doesn't matter so like unless you're like at the top of your game yeah unless you're yeah. like literally at the top and you actually want to compete like properly right that's the only place where it matters because then you need to have the cards right so you need to spend the money to like actually have the cards i can't remember there might have been like a like a, tr a trading system as well like an economy system where you could somehow trade the cards i can't i think i think that exists it's been a long time since i played hearthstone but i, I played it for a good while um and people like you know bought me some like packs for my birthday and stuff like that like back in the day and um and it was good fun i enjoyed my time on it but like i realized that it was sort of pointless buying more cards because of that right it's like well i'm not there to become number one i'm not even there to enter any tournaments i'm just enjoying it and i of enjoying the strategy of playing it actually then at this point doesn't make any difference whether i have more cards or not like if i get better i'll go up the ranks 
But having better cards, all that's going to do is just like, it's just going to push me slightly up the ranks a little bit. And then I'm just going to be playing with a 50-50 win rate again. So like, does it, I haven't got any better. So it's kind of a, a moot point. Like sometimes you can play with more interesting cards and there are like decks that you can't really make without certain things. Like, yeah, that's fair. And certain decks don't work without certain cards. So that's, that's also true. But um, yeah, as a casual player of it, it didn't actually bother me that it was like technically pay to win because of the way that the skill stuff ended up like working its way through and like people with like significantly better decks would end up just ranking themselves out of my tier. <clears throat> just kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, I guess that's like kind of, that's actually more toxic than Marvel Snap. It sounds at least. Yeah, plus Marvel Snap tries to, I mean, like, as cl- you know, reasonable possible, I assume it, it matches based off your similar collection level. So if you mm. have like 200 out of 4,000 whatever cards, you'll get matched close within that range. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which is nice. Because, I, I, yeah, I just, I just hate the idea is like, oh man, you know, I'm playing against someone that you have the card that you probably bought that I don't have, or, you know, you have the thing that I don't have. So it's like not a fair, like just in like principle. I yeah. just hate that so much. Yeah, it is kind of, an, it is annoying. Wow. It is annoying. Even some other games that I've played in the past that have like I've enjoyed, like World of Tanks, definitely had some like World of Tanks has some yeah. like hard pay to win in it. I'm not surprised. <laughs> like proper pay to win. I'm not surprised. That like Actually, that yeah, had, like the... gold ammo. That's like my least favorite type of pay to win. Like golden premium ammo. That's like my least yeah. favorite oh. thing. There's like there's like there's like grades of pay to win. Um within World of Tanks. Like I I played World of Tanks a lot. And stuff that I don't mind paying for, especially if I'm gonna play for a long time, is like Permanent things that are like quality of life. So like, I guess like the EOD stash equivalent in World of Tanks is like having a bigger garage so you can have more tanks. So you can play like a wider variation of tanks and level more mm-hmm. tanks at once, which I paid for because that was like 10 bucks. And it was one time and it increased your garage size by like from like five to 10. And I was like, I could just play more varieties of games too. I could just, I could enjoy myself more. But like paying for like consumables in, oh, like I hate that. Like especially stuff that gives you an advantage. I'm like, man, that's like yeah. very, so anti like what I enjoy about these games. and. It's like anti gamer. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's just I don't. <laughs> I just don't like that. It's, it's bad. Yeah, bad. Um, do we have time for one more, one more topic? Yeah, sure. What you got? A little thing. I was gonna just briefly talk about some of the thermal stuff because, like, I've been. It's the first time I've looked into the thermals for a, a while. You know, I had a, a video ages ago about the old thermals. I think I did it when. I might have done it with like the Tory Pines and the 155 thermal came into the game because that was still like that was a while ago like you know for ages we just had the uh we just had the the, the two stand the staples um but now we've got you know six and like four good ones I've been using the Echo One a little bit recently I haven't actually used the Zeus the Zeus Pro I haven't I haven't used that in like an actual raid I haven't used it in anger yet but um. I've used the Echo One because it's kind of interesting. Like at the moment, the we've got like two thermals that suck that are yeah, one can only go on the shotty and one is like actually just garbage. Then you've got um the Reaper R, which is probably the best, I would say. But it's a two and a half time zoom. Like, yeah, the, the, the frame rate is like really nice. And the screen is like okay as well. But the fact that it's like two and a half times zoom sometimes is like a little too much because like you what you you almost want is just to be able to like scan with the thermal that's like the best part about the thermal is like target acquisition once you've acquired the target then it's a bit easier um but yeah it's uh that's why i think that the the echo one's quite interesting because that's a, a one times and a two times and so you're like the furthest back like you get the most like field of view the, the Green itself is actually kind of like small. It's not that big. It's like middle, middle-ish sized. But you can scan mm. a lot with it because it's more like a holographic. Now, the sensitivity is a bit weird. It's slightly too high, which is a bit annoying. Classic. But, um, <laughs> classic. Yeah, absolutely classic. But uh, yeah, you can scan with that and it's actually pretty good. I, I played a Woods Raid with it on an RSAS and like killed two PMCs and didn't actually know that they were PMCs. Like one of them, I thought maybe they were like a fire <laughs> at first. I was like... I was like shooting at them and then they like something moved. I was like sh- carried on shooting and I was like, they, is, is they dead? Is that even a person? Like, I'm not even sure what's happened. And then I couldn't like 
because I was sort of in the open, I didn't go and find the body. And then later on on the kill screen, it's just like, oh, Yusek, just like dead randomly in the bush. And like, poor guy. Like, I didn't even know he was dead. Um, and then some <laughs> other dude who I thought was a scav, like when I was trying to leave outside the car extract. Again, they were also another PMC that just got taken out by the thermal, like through a bush or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. The only thing about it, you, you know, the, um, the three to 10 scope, the really cheap yes. one, the Russian one, it's got the same vibe yes. as that in some ways, because it's not quite the same, but like you go one times, two times, then one times fusion, two times fusion, and then one times back to red hot again. So if you go like one to two, you then have to click like one, two, three right. to get back to number to one, which is like, ah, uh, it's actually pretty annoying that like yeah. the mode and the zoom are all keyed to the same button. You know, so it's all, it would almost be better if you had like a mode button, like almost like the, let's say you had like the flashlight laser on off like tactical device on off was that i mean that would screw up your tacticals but like something like having a, a tactical laser flashlight button for the scope so it flicks it between red hot and um uh and zoom, yeah sorry red hot and, and fusion as it's called and then the other one does the one times two times and have them separated i think it's like it's only an issue at the moment on that three to ten because it's mm. like Three times, illuminated three times. Ten times, illuminated ten times. Three times, right? And it's like, you have to click so many times again on that one. And on the, on the thermals at the minute, the flare doesn't have any modes other than, like, the default. So it's like, oh, it's two times and then nine. And then the Reap has only got uh, black hot, white hot. So there's no Zoom. So until these two got introduced, it wasn't an issue. And the Zeus is the same. The Zeus is two and eight. I think I think it's two and eight. I think it's two and eight. I think it's like two times and eight times. Again, it's like white hot, eight times white hot, two times fusion, eight times fusion, etc. 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 et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. Um, But yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's good though. I actually quite like it. And the, the one, I do want to try the Zeus because it's really strange actually how they've got these like fusion modes on. And I don't, I don't know enough about thermals IRL. I tried to have a quick look online but I couldn't find anything in detail about it, like easily with the Google as to what like fusion is supposed to be. I wasn't sure what that was meant to be. It sounds to me like you're supposed to be able to see more of like the terrain as well as the stuff. It's not just like gray and then only the hot stuff comes and is, is obvious and like comes and pops out the screen at you. But a fusion on the echo is like unintelligible. Whereas the fusion on the Zeus is really good. Mm. in the game so it's like really weird so like you're better off using like white hot on the echo fusion on the zeus and then the zoomed in version on the zeus is quite pixely on both of them like it doesn't necessarily look as look as good really but i quite look the idea of using the zeus on the 2x mode because i actually think it's probably better than the flare like short range mode i i think from like a, a quick peruse around it seemed more clear anyway i'm quite interested to use it the only problem the only problem with it is that you have to you have to basically like pay a LEDX for the Zeus. Um so it ends up being there's no like cheap way to get it. So you end up paying probably like six hundred K at least. And then there's a different quest which um actually I'll I'll check now. There's another quest. I think I forgot to mention this because somebody put it in the video. Um there's like I thought it was just the killing glue hard quest that you need to do, but I think there's a different one. Yeah, you have to do broadcast part five to trade cultist knives for it and that makes Ooh. it like 400k so that's not too bad but to do broadcast part five you have to eliminate priest so you you have to kill like you know the difficult cultists to get that one so most people are like locked behind just doing the Lennox one after killing caban because killing caban is is easier than killing the cultists i would argue so yeah Lennox is uh right now like well when i bought mine it was like 600 and something the whole market has gone completely bonkers because it's like towards the end of the wipe so everything's got like really expensive contact fours currently are like 400k i bought a slap plate for a fast mt but i was using it on a tc 2000 or whatever that was 600k the bastion um diamond age bastion plate is now like 800k <laughs> so everything's just gone kind of insane yeah so Ledix is like 680k i mean for a thermal scope like it's not necessarily that bad I think thinking about some of the others there, they're, they're a little, you can get other ones that are a little bit cheaper. And that probably makes it like the most expensive one barring the, the Reap. But either which way, I like guess 
it's fun to play around with them kind of at the end of the wipe because like the rest of the time i just don't really bother like the, the risk it's one of those weird things like i was contemplating and tempted using it for this really hard quest but i was like the thermal is probably going to give me it's like a really weird way to have to play the thermal's probably going to give me an advantage in 90% of situations against regular players. But 10% of the time, I might, be cha- I might be targeted by an RGB gaming chair. So if I'm optimizing for like not dying as little as possible, I'm actually probably better off not going in with the thermal and taking the slightly reduced combat performance with just like a voodoo or something, because I'm not intending to get into a fight anyway and avoid getting spiked by some unsalubrious gamer who wants to take my loot. Which is kind of weird. So I ended up like not taking it in to like the super hard quest on that basis, which is weird. For kills quests, like absolutely take it, right? Because there's no real penalty to dying other than just the money. So for some of these kills, like if they are still running these kill quests on Monday, I might take the Zeus and start farming people on Shoreline or whatever. Because like, man, I tried to go to Interchange a couple of times. Complete wasteland. It's like no players. Really? That's kind yeah, of surprising. Like, no one, like killer's not killer's zero percent on all the uh, I don't I don't know if I said this earlier, but like the boss is zero oh, percent on all the other maps. Yeah, that makes sense then. So everyone's on streets and like interchange is just like a barren wasteland. I mean if you want to make money, interchange would be now a good place to go if there's yeah, if you, know, you want to make money now. <laughs> I like I like ran through the whole mall. Listen, I <laughs> I can I like players. that one guy. Who will who have like millions and millions of rubles and will continue to keep playing <laughs> and keep looting rubles and it's like why? you know what money number go up <laughs> I guess it's just why do you care like I don't know I just like there's just a certain point where it's like I feel I just feel dead inside you know what I mean it's like oh I looted yeah. on a GPU yay oh I died yay <laughs> like okay I don't know. That's yeah, the I, I, I definitely get to that point as well. I get to that point too, but uh, I still can't help myself from crafting and whatever. It's like so no, ingrained in the muscle memory I mean, at that you're... point that you just do it anyway. I mean, you have every incentive too, I suppose. You know, it's like you're, yeah. you're 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 throwing away rubles if you're not effectively. So, and then they're all going to get thrown away for you on the wipes. So. Yeah, it's it's just like for me, it's less about like oh having the money or whatever. For me, it's things like. It's the what if. It's the reason why I keep all the dog tags and then mm-hmm. a random event appears where you need level 25 plus dog tags and I've got them all. Like a random event appears where you need the green card. Like I, I hadn't even saved enough money to buy that last time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, but I could buy the machete. It's like stupid stuff like that. Things appear like late white for me. The money is there to pay for the dumb events that BSG <laughs> put on that are incredibly expensive. Like you grind the whole wipe so that you can pay for that at the end. Just in case, just in case there's something really important that costs you 80 mil. Like I, I have 63 mil and it's like, nah, this is more than last. Because last, last wipe I felt like kind of annoyed because rather than storing up money, I was just like buying thick items cases, just as many as I could. I think I got six by the end of the wipe. But I had like 15, 20 mil permanently because I was just continuously buying thick items cases. Whereas like, yeah, this wipe I didn't bother. I've just like stuck with the original one. And so I've got 60 something mil. Um, and so if something silly appears, then I can go and do the thing and buy the whatever. It's like with the Caban key, everyone's like, oh, the Caban key's like, oh man, it's so crazy. And it's like, well, even at six mil, like, you know, if this is, the, if this is it, if this is like the end of white like, quest line, and if there's nothing else to do, I could try it like 10 times at the highest possible price and still. You know, still have them. No, more than, sorry, ten. Yeah, yeah, no, ten times, and still have like some money left over, or whatever. Um, that's the, that's the thing for me. It's just like you buying yourself that like optionality to participate in the ending quest lines. So it's less about just like mindlessly farming money, and more about that. Because, but I do, I do stop as well. I slow down and, and don't do too much at the end of the wipe. Like. I don't, I'm not logging in, just like continuously running through factory anymore. I mean, I was sort of intensified to do that because I needed some items for some quests, like samples and whatnot. And I was also trying to get six rep. But once I got that, and once I got the items I needed for samples and stuff, I'm like, eh, I don't need the money now. Like I could make more for free, but, and it's not even much effort, but just I have to open the game and press go and then run to the extract and press sell defense. 
it's definitely that time. That's the time when I know that I'm like, right, I'm, you know, yeah. you know the wipes coming and I'm like, I'm smoothing down. I go in my hideout, like the fuel's run out. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. It needs to be a mandatory agreement. Like it's a document at the sign when you play Tarkov that you consent to having a little a lobotomy done to your brain after. Uh, there needs to be a case study done on Tarkov players. Yeah, something something wrong with us for sure. You know, one maybe thing I... Oh, go ahead. No, go, go, go for it. I was just literally just going to say, like, you know, maybe we've got some kind of bizarre dopamine cycle. I don't know. Yeah, there is weird, because there's some things just like, you know, it's like you're a creature of habit, you know? Like, I'm even, like, I'll just log on. Like, I'm pretty much done for the wipe, but I'm still, like, logging on and doing hideout crafts. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, not not now, but, like, you know. I Like, I don't know, like, maybe, God. After 30 days, we'll say, you know, mm. I've like gone into this like hideout crafting only phase, you know, hideout main. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I'll play it. I'll play again. I'm just, you know, I'm just I got to keep the hideout going because, you know, obviously, you know, if I don't, it's like I'm wasting stuff. But like, I never come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say one thing I really hope that they come out with because you brought up earlier that you know, I just wanted to get a shout to is. um you know, with Lorena coming out, esports, whatever. Like, God, please give us sensitivity, accessibility options, and scope scaling and fix. The, yeah, just like do do a little something there. I hate one thing I've like really have done, um, a lot of recently. I've been playing like kind of like various FPS games is converting my senses from one game to the other. Because mm. not everything. I caught you in the middle of doing that the other day, didn't I? Because it was just like church is now playing, church is now playing, church is now church is now playing. Oh on yeah, Steam. That's right. Yeah. It was like came up like a list of like five, like two games, like back to back. I was like, church, what are you doing, my man? Like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm changing sensitivities between games, or like, yeah, you know, aligning sensitivities between different games. Yeah, because you have to like, I mean, there's websites for it that will like do the math for you, which is great. Like a mm. shout out to those resources. But like sometimes you get like I had to like fetch the actual value of the sensitivity from one game and I couldn't like I couldn't get it from like a file apparently or something because it's like baked into the engine. I think it's battle, but anyways, I'm sure sure I've been doing that. Like I just did that for the finals last night. I had to like because like, I've never seen a game do this before. But instead of having like a config file, it's just like a text file that you can just edit like settings for hmm. and values. Um, this one uses a saved game state file and you have to use a hex editor to change it which i've never done before so i got the experience of that that was fun <laughs> but anyways um yeah i've been like doing that a lot and uh it's you know it's just like i don't know a good practice i feel like um but if you're trying to play a game that doesn't have <laughs> you know good scaling or uh, how should i say like various sensitivity scalings on random things that don't need scaling like different one x's like i don't that doesn't make any sense to me and then you get in the scopes territory which is just a whole another can of worms it's yeah that would be a nice thing if we could have that plus remove the fucking mouse i'll never i'll never forgive nikita if he doesn't do that i will die on my grave i've got the receipts. On my tombstone <laughs> shaking i've got the back. receipts i asked him and he said yes <laughs> yeah it's well. coming soon Soon. Yeah. Soon my ass. We've already done the first part. Why didn't you just set it to zero? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for today. Unless you got anything else. No, no, I think we're I think we're good. Um I was gonna like maybe talk about audio stuff, but like we we can talk about it next time. I'm like putting together a video about it, so you know that, that can wait. That can easily wait. It's a whole can of worms on its own. And I'm still like passing through some of the ramifications of it. Um, some some kind of like interesting things, especially stuff like what can you hear? What can't you hear? <laughs> Shall I give you Nothing. a little ticket now? Shall I give you a teaser? Give sure. you a teaser. You know, like ADS blind fire to um, mm -hmm. not make any sound un ADSing? Yeah. Doesn't work anymore. You still hear it third party. Even though you okay. don't yourself, you don't you don't hear the un ADS sound when you blind fire, but they do. 
a good fix, but you know, it would be nice if that Why was... doesn't it play for the client? Right. Yeah, exactly. Crouch walking on all surfaces at min speed. Quiet. Completely silent. silent. I Beat still don't like. I still am not grass, sure if that's concrete, a bug or not. Wood, metal, metal containers. Please. See, Please. Tiggs had a theory. He posted something about which would be pretty easy to test if you had another account. But something about like as soon as you get one point in, uh, maybe it wasn't there. Anyways, as soon as you get one point in um, stealth skill or whatever crouch walking skill, I don't remember what it's called. Sneaking, maybe. Then mm. you get it's bugged and you get like, you know, max. Technically, level one is technically max or something like this, and that's why it's silent. I don't know. I'm still uncertain if like crouching, being silent is a bug or not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one's really sure whether it's actually good or bad either for the game. Because I mean, I don't, I don't want to open up a whole can of worms here. Well, just as we're just it's, about it's to finish, but like. <laughs> What have you done? <laughs> but like, what is better? That people can creep around mm -hmm. and make no noise mm -hmm. and reposition a bit. Like, you're super slow, right? It's not, like, let's be honest, it's not quick. Yeah. Or not be allowed to move and make any sound at all. Would you rather people have to be, like, literally stationary? Or would we rather people to be able to move a bit? Those are the two outcomes, because and, and neither is good. Because one of them means that as soon as anybody hears anyone else, you now have to be like completely still. Yeah. Or I mean, the, the other alternative being like they get to move like a bit. I think I'd rather people be able to move a bit. I think so as well. Like it's not necessarily it's not realistic for somebody to move at like zero speed. I was mm -hmm. crouched, but I don't care. Well, I just yeah, I, I did. I didn't like. Like, it basically puts you in a situation where it's like, okay, I can't move a muscle, but I'm in the worst spot imaginable. But mm. hopefully I'll just stay here and hopefully no one see me. And he sees me and I'm dead. You know, that's yeah. like what happened. So then what, what you learn eventually is like, okay, well, I might as well just always be making noise because, like, there's almost, like, there's very few times where it actually makes sense to, like, stop and stand still because the chance yeah. I'm going to be in a good spot is just, like, something to none. So now that you have, like, some, you know, wiggle room, I think that's like better but i'm just not sure if because like for example in that one it i don't again i only have like 13 hours played over the course of two days but i don't there was one instance where i heard someone behind me and i turned around like they were sneaking on me so i i just wondered if maybe like i wasn't sure if that was like something else i was hearing or if it was like maybe they weren't sneaking or something in that instance but i thought it was kind of strange that you know you could be heard while sneaking behind someone but maybe it's fine if it's within like you know five meter radius or something yeah because i know it's different too because it's a melee game i feel like and third person yeah maybe that's fine in maybe knock should actually be like shorter but maybe five meters in tarkov actually is like okay you know like if somebody's like right next to you because you don't really want like if somebody's that's down, kind of let's what say, i feel like yeah i wouldn't want like if somebody's down the office corridor say you're fighting down the office corridor i wouldn't want someone to hear me sneak walking there that would allow me to like move away without them knowing where I'd gone. But if they're like on the other side of the wall, I probably do want to hear them because that's just kind of weird. Well, yeah, I mean, to make the radius collusion. really short. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel. Is like just just make it really short. So like if they're right next to me, yeah, or, or like actually even better is like just make it like instead of having like cutoffs, just make it like scale. You know, like volume wise. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I mean. So, like, you know, it becomes like it starts to become audible at around like five meters or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. If somebody okay, is catch, creeping on you, you're like, oh, actually, oh god, there's like somebody like right here. Right. Yeah. Um, which I feel I mean, like it, Tarkov doesn't have that right now. This for crack walking, like... it's like it's just it's just zero. Like no, I, I mean the. Don't... Sorry, I just to clarify. I mean the like any walking, like it all sounds like the range is really small. That it, the dynamic range is really small. Like, the difference between them being 50 meters away versus one meter away is, like, four decibels. That's how it feels like, anyways. Yeah, so I... I definitely think the dynamic... Dam I definitely think the dynamic range needs to change some way. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how. I'm not a sound engineer, for a start, and secondly, I'm 
haven't got the analysis of like what it looks like at every you know every sort of you know 10 meter interval or whatever but one of my suspicions you can hear walking from a lot further than other things let me let me just say that from like a lot of the testing that i was doing this morning walking is like some of the most audible stuff you can do you could do lots of other things like change scopes change like fire mode uh, go into your inventory all that kind of stuff and you could do that from much closer than you can walk um just for like rough ranges like most of these things most of these like actions even with contact fours are something like 30 meters ish but if you're walking overweight you could be heard from 80 baby like it's a long way it's like 50 extra meters when you're walking like walking mm. is some of the loudest stuff you can do in the whole game but what that means is the dynamic range let's say the dynamic range is the same as it used to be mm. you never used to be able to hear people from 80 meters but now that you can the dynamic range is now spread from zero meters which is right next to you to 80 meters away so the gradient of the audio volume is now much shallower than it used to be because the max and the min are still the same as they were. But before it was, say, it was 50 meters, so the grow line was like this, but now it's been spread out because you know, they can't make the game any louder and you can't make it any quieter than zero. So the gradient of that line is actually less shallow. It's, it's more shallow than it used to be. So for every 10, 10 meter interval, it's less decibel increase than it was previously because there's just less to play with. That's like one of my theories as to why that uh, might be the case. Um, I see. Hmm. I have this like bizarre theory that like I, I haven't tested and I haven't really worked on fully that like in some situations, the contact fours are actually a disadvantage because of this thing, because they start off at zero at 80 meters, whereas the crappy headsets start off at zero at like 50 meters or 60 meters. So they actually have a, a sharper incline for their, for their audibility. Is contact is fours the, the best one? The best ones, yeah, yeah, they're the best ones. But what, wouldn't they be... Better simply on the merit that the ambient noise noise is lower, therefore the the floor is lowered. That's so, that is also true. Yeah, that's that's also potentially true. But I, uh, I think I see where you're going, and it's yeah. Maybe, you see, maybe, like it's it's a random theory, but yeah, there's the, right. the floor noise is lower too. So like maybe maybe that counteracts it. I don't know. Um, and also like maybe you sort of have like do you sometimes have more information having less information? Like if you, say you have a headset that, <laughs> say you're wearing the contact fours and they're 80 meters and you're on factory, you can hit everyone at all times. If you're wearing a, you know, if you're wearing like the tin cup that has a okay. 10 meter radius, if you hear someone, you know he's within 10 meters for sure, for definite. <laughs> this sounds like the... <laughs> and what, is this just a crackpot theory or like... <laughs> uh, this just reminds me of how I had that one thought logic where I was like, hmm, but if I get hit in my chest and my armor's oh, yeah. not getting hit you know it sounds like a bit like that yeah. <laughs> a little bit but i'm i'm sure i'm sure there's a thing i'm, I'm sure there's a, yeah, there's a thing I mean, to do there's... with that of like you know if you were wearing like the the omega phone right which <laughs> which allows you to hear every pmc right, on the entire right. map that would actually probably be bad yeah you, you but... probably don't want that because then you could hear there... everybody at all times but there's a assumption that there's not differentiation between distances you know if you can hear everyone if i had unlimited hearing distance but it's all coming in at 100 percent, that is like that's awful i mean that's basically uh, how course. i live my life i have a thousand voices <laughs> yeah. in my head and they're all at the 100 percent volume <laughs> but if i but if i had if the volume was a scale based off their distance and that like might not be that bad like i guess it still would be difficult to decipher all the noise yes but i kind of i see yeah. where you're going of it you know you see where i'm going you yeah. know i'm cooking something up i don't he, i don't, I don't know like, <laughs> i don't know we'll, we'll see i'm not, I'm not sure i still think contact falls are completely cracked though to be honest but uh yeah it's it's a funny one but yeah there's like there's that and more coming in this next one this next bit which is cool i don't know whether i need to test more stuff yet i'm not sure probably not i think i think i've got enough data to produce some more interesting interesting things what you're um, saying is i should play with mono on because as long as i hear the sound then i don't have to worry about if it's left or right i just know that <laughs> got it okay yeah all right uh, less less information equals more information okay i just play with my screen <laughs> off these days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much noise in the game like visual noise i just cut the screen off because everything's so much simpler mm-hmm mm-hmm all right, quickly, um, there is hot off the BSG news 
presses. Uh, we got new Catman talking events. I don't know what this is. It just popped up two minutes ago. Uh, something about the cats talking and then the Texas, like that ARG esque stuff coming up, talking about the all those responding to the call in action. Then, for information on the terror group experiment stimulant has been found as it has it. As has its entire batch, it will be destroyed. I have watched your every move and know who has been most active. Yes, Chuck Sled. I can't even say that. Chuckles I'm talking TV. Chuckles TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, I. I guess I could full screen it. Oh yeah, that makes it easier to read. That's it. Goal accomplished. Learn to see. Wait, what did he say? Learn to see what others can only hear. Oh and my then god. Nice guy's the top comment, and he just says, "Okay, who's Chuckles TV?" <laughs> Yeah, who is Chuckles TV? <laughs> He's the legend that donated his whole stash for the teddy bears. An oh, Australian chef that's and streamer cool. grinded to a billion rubles and then spent it all on bears. I, I saw <laughs> that. The, a Dimitri comment, he was like, some heroes just don't wear capes or something like that. <laughs> Talking about Chuckles. Uh, which I love. I like that. Uh, they got a good chuckle out of me. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, looks like Part six was renamed to the after party. Seem return to mall bosses. Seem return to maps. So now you have to kill the goons as well for the task. Waiting to find where. This is just hot off the press from Logical, who did yeah, not data process. mine the uh, allegedly. Yeah. So now <laughs> it says like so it's not one raid, and now it's Rishala, Gluha, Killish, Dim, and Sanitar mm, together. Okay. Night, Big Pipe, Bird Eye. So you have to find them on each of those maps. But I mean, obviously that's gonna be a pain. Unless they like make it 100 percent spawn on them on those maps, yeah, it's gonna be annoying. It's nice, nice of them to do that. Yeah, cool. All right, now I think that's officially the close of the cast. Unless, no, no. Okay, don't think. Kick is shaking his head. No, <laughs> nope. We're good. All right, everyone. As always. We'll catch you all next week, and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.